Hi guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics. This is the beginning of leg 9 of 12 of our flight across the Pacific. This is the first scary leg, but the good news is we have a full moon, and uh, you might be able to read the gauges like I can, and uh, the airplane is lit up, so that's going to be very nice uh, being able to fly with the moon. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that uh, it is night for the uh, first section of the video. And the reason that is is because uh, the way Prepper 3D works, I'll plug it a time um, to load in. And it will load based on my current system time, not based on the island. And then after the intro, I will feed the, the computer the actual time that it should be at. Uh, to correct it. So uh, the reason it is now night is because we are within five hours of my local time zone. So uh, if if my local time zone, I'm setting it to a uh, morning hour, well, that's going to be a night hour uh, when you when you subtract five hours. Okay, here is the infamous expedition legs. Uh, that we have will be flying from number 8 Tahiti to number 9 Totagegi, uh, which is on uh, the island of Mangareva in the Gambier Islands. The reason it's going to be scary is due to its length, over a thousand miles long. Um, but the good news is there actually will be islands down there, and because we have a full moon, I do expect to see those. Uh, the islands will appear roughly hourly, so that's pretty handy. Uh, so we can use those to check our position. And we can also uh, check that against the celestial observation to confirm that I really am where I expect I am. I mean, so far, I have only managed to cross-check the line of position uh, because I can see the island that I want to land at. But this should afford us the opportunity to actually check and make sure that our uh, fixes are good and accurate on the way there, which is going to become very important in uh, leg 10 because that will take us past the pit cairns. And then once we get past those, there is not a single piece of land until we hit Easter Island. And that is the only piece of land within a thousand miles. So that's very significant. Uh, because of the great distance we're going to be covering, I'm going to uh, fly up at 30,000 feet, although it's not going to be quite as important for spotting land, hopefully, uh, because of the amount of islands that are going to be. Um, it's not really an archipelago. It's sort of, um, I mean, the Gambiers is. But along the way there, it's kind of like an atoll here, an atoll there, and that's it. Uh, as we get further and further from the Tonga Trench, um, the, uh, the water will become shallower, uh, but still reaching abyssal depths. Um, now, this is the most important thing here. And I said this is a scary leg. This flight will be flown using a speed profile of four. Four is... Make no mistake, the fuel situation takes center stage, but we can squeak out just a little bit extra speed above what I'm really concerned about going in all fuel concerns, um, which is five. So, so we're not quite there, but we're almost there. Uh, the flight estimate says 3.2. I'm actually expecting four hours for this flight because... I'm looking at the uh, at the the winds, and we're starting to come out of the tropics, which is both good and bad. It's good in the sense that we're now entering a high pressure zone, uh, which means that there's going to be less thunderstorms. But it's also bad in the sense that um, we're starting to pick up some some high uh, some high speed winds in the subtropics. Uh, that's going to significantly slow us down because we're we're fighting the the planet's um, rotation driven Hadley cells, and I'm expecting that we're going to have a significant amount of leftover range, but we'll have to see. I'll explain it a little bit more when we get to the field chart.
Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and move into the nav log. Okay, and I want to call your attention right away to a new member of the nav log. And this one will be staying around for quite a while. Talk to. That means that more than two hours into cruise, we still have not hit the LOP intercept. And we're not barely coming into a talk two. Um, there is still another uh, another 222 miles after talk two before we hit the LOP intercept. So we are really two thirds of the way from getting a talk three. Uh, so again, significant uh, length of flight. The other thing that you'll notice is the beginning of descent is actually after the LOP intercept, and that's no accident. You see, the reason that that I put the LOP intercept where it is is because I offset one tenth of the flight distance. It takes us 98 miles uh, to descend, and you'll notice that the um, well, actually, it's a little bit more like. 92 miles. But you'll notice that our total length of flight is about 1,029 miles. So that means that our LOP intercept to destination distance is going to be about 103 miles. And having a descent distance of 98 miles, well, there's your answer. LOP intercept will actually occur before beginning a descent. Now, that's actually a good thing because that means I'm going to be directly facing the island head on, which means all I need to do is scan like a barcode scanner or a, or a radar uh, thing up and down between the horizon and my nose, up and down until I can see an island. And then once I see it, we're good to descend. Um, other than that, yeah, really long flight. Uh, we're going to be at 303 uh, miles per hour, and that's because we're going to be flying the, the cruise profile of four. Um, you'll hear when we get into cruise tonight that when I pull the power back, it's coming way back. It's not like, you know, okay, we're going to lower the RPM by 100 RPM. We're going to lower the manifold pressure by... Um, one inch no we're coming all the way back to um, to about uh, 2,000 rpm and a manifold pressure of about 32 inches so we're coming way back you should hear the you should hear the engine sound spool back quite a bit when we do that um, oh yeah and then the other really important thing here uh, up at the uh, top left the Totegegi weather is yellow, and the reason it's yellow is because, well, we are so far out in the Pacific now that there are no METARs available. So, basically what I'm saying is, hey, I don't know what the weather actually is, but here's what weather forecasters are predicting for the area. You know, that's the best I can do, and it's just going to be a toss-up at that point for what actually happens. So, another reason why this leg is particularly scary. Okay, and lastly, uh, if you look at the liftoff uh, section, um, if you look at the top row where it says ATIS weather, and then you go down through the gray weather section, you'll see times, and you, you look at Basically, underneath where it says 1014, there's a 1054 low. Um, what that is getting towards is, for some reason, when I loaded my simulation in previous flights, it did not load with the drop tanks being showed. We're going to cut back to Prepper 3D. If, if I want to actually get those tanks in, what I need to do is click a check mark that says um, external tanks, but if you'll notice, if I load up the um, if I load up the, the fuel level here in the upper left, you'll see it says 100%. So we know that those those uh, fuel tanks are being simulated because if I go to fuel and payload here, it's showing my external tanks is 300. So that's being properly simulated. But what's not is the fact that there's nothing under 
the uh, aircraft. So I need to actually remember to click the fuel tanks here on this tick mark in order to actually have them show up. And now you can actually see that the tanks have spawned. But the fuel is still going to say 100%. So that's something that I need to keep in mind uh, for, for proper loadouts. Um, the last thing I'm going to mention about the nav log is if you look at the airport info destination, it's just a straight NA. The only information that I have is what it's called and how high off the sea floor, it, well, the, the sea, how off the sea level it is. Everything else, there's, there's no frequencies. And you ask me, why are we ignoring the fact that we have a radio on board the aircraft? This is why, because there is no radio station later on in, in the uh, expedition. And I don't want to prepare for something that I can't use. Moving on to the celestial, uh, the celestial nav log here, you'll notice that the, uh, the chart is growing. It used to end at three hours. Now I'm going all the way up to five hours because uh, to add some buffer zone to a four-hour flight, uh, you'll see that we're expecting to land at Totegegi right around 1,500. And I will note that we're single-engine return all the way, but we are not single-engine to Totegegi all the way because of the, because of the uh, increase in distance as well as the uh, fact that we're combating headwinds here. Moving on to the fuel chart, and you can see uh, the amount remaining for one engine to Totegegi in the lower left, which is 431. Uh, and you'll see across, it means that we can go 939 miles on one engine if we have to, uh, which means that we are actually one engine to Totegegi uh, 25 minutes after departure, which is about uh, 89 miles into the climb. So that's just about when we level off. So if we level off and cruise, it means that we can make single engine to Totegegi if absolutely necessary. Um, we don't intersect the point of no return, point of safe return, or line of one engine return. And uh, why am I at a slower fuel setting if, uh, you know, I could theoretically land even if we intersected all all three of those points. I shouldn't say theoretically, you know, we could plan to land. Well, the reason being is because the just flight model, which more closely follows the POH, uh, would be almost empty after this flight. And again, this is what the POH is telling me. So because of that, I'm going to prepare for... Um, losing a lot more fuel than, than I uh, have planned on this chart, but not how much I have planned, assuming that we are flying under the same regime as the, uh, as the just flight model. So we burn roughly six-tenths as much as that model, and we'll have to see if that persists. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, like I said, I haven't tested it yet in the Milvis version, so we're going to assume it's what the POH says. Okay, and lastly, here is the landfall chart. So updated for Totegegi, we're uh, aiming to arrive at the LOP intercept at 1435. Um, I have factored in the high headwinds uh, to get us there uh, just about on time. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Fairly standard uh, chart, except this time we're going to be using Atria, which is a southern star. So instead of using a northern star and making a right turn, we're going to be using a southern star and making a left turn. So that's something we've never done before, but I don't think it's going to be um, really significant in any particular way. Um, I am alert to the fact that that could make things different, but I haven't identified anything that really does make it different. So until I feel uncomfortable, we're just going to keep going as is. Okay, lastly, here is the uh, snapshot of the satellite image. And this is what I was getting at, where basically we had hourly islands. So there's actually a reef uh, off of the top 
point. So we'll, once we reach top of climb, I can look for some light blue water. We might not see it because even with even with the moon, it, it might be hard to make out shallow water. You typically need some really bright light to be able to see that, but we can try. And then shortly before talk one, we should have an island. And then shortly before talk two, we should have an atoll. And then a little bit after talk two, there should be another reef. By that time, it should be getting bright enough that we should be able to tell what it is. And then they're approaching the LOP intercept. We should get two more reefs. And then near beginning of descent, there should be another island. Uh, and then, of course, Totegegi itself in the Gambiers. And you'll notice to the right of Totegegi, um, there is not really uh, many islands. There's the Pitcairns. And then that's it. That's the beginning of the Eastern Pacific Island Gap all the way to uh, Easter Island, which we're going to be doing next flight. Um, the last thing I want to mention here is that there is a upper white line that's extending from Tahiti um, in a northeasterly direction that goes away from our track. That is the uh, Contiki expedition that Thor Heyerdahl's team took. So I just have that on there so that I can sort of correlate with, okay, uh, here's what underneath the plane sort of looks like you know, in terms of what it would look like if I were on, on the ocean. And that's just for a little bit more, um, to try to put a face to where I am, you know, otherwise to just say, oh yeah, I'm just an empty ocean. Well, no, we can actually draw a picture of, of we can do better than that. We can get a video of what it looks like in this area. So that's that. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to trade the correct time into the simulator, and we're going to begin the oh-so-scary leg nine. And just one note about my uh, airport plates. I actually had to make my own plate for, at least to some degree, for Totegegi. The uh, diagram that I had was in meters, which is not what this plane uses um, for planning and it was also quite blurry. Uh, there was no clear image, so I actually had to label a couple things, like the length of the runway and the runways that we could use. Um, oh yeah, and one note about uh, FS Real WX Pro. So, you know how I was complaining endlessly about how when I would get near an island, it would just spawn cumulus like crazy, and how even when I'm in the middle of the ocean, um, there are cirrus clouds? Well, I looked into that and see if there was a correlation, and yeah, I understand that's kind of like cheating, but mind you, this was after the flight, because it's kind of like, you know, cracking into into the universe's code. Well, I'm actually glad I did, and here's why. Um, in the options, you can configure a, quote, default weather to use when no other uh, METAR stations are available. I don't think we have reached default weather yet because, as I said uh, in the flight uh, two times ago, when we started getting errors in loading the METARs, that was one or two stations out of seven. But for our flight today, we are going out into the region of the Pacific where we're having no nearby METARs. So what I think is going to happen is we're going to load that default weather. and. So, so what is that composed of? That's composed of a blanket check as to whether or not you generate cirrus clouds. You know, so it literally looks like in the option, generate cirrus clouds, see si or no. Um, and then there's the other, um, the other check on uh, how many cumulus clouds to generate underneath the airplane, assuming that there's no METAR available. And I forget what it was set to, but... Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the uh, the weather chart right now, and uh, this is the absolute last time that I'm going to take a look at this thing. So I'm, I'm taking a look at windy.com, and I'm going to satellite right now, and I'm looking at uh, Papete, and I'm not seeing any cirrus clouds. I'm seeing some uh, maybe cloud streets of stratus clouds. And the way I know their stratus is because if I click it, it'll tell me minus 17C, minus 18C. That's the temperature of the cloud tops. 
And how do I know what my altitude is? My altitude up at 30,000 feet is um, uh, it's minus 35C, and I got that from the flight planning. So I know that, that cirrus clouds can't really exist below um, 35C. So, yeah, minus 20C. So there's nothing. And then I'm looking out over the rest of the ocean. There's a few stray cumulus clouds. These are these guys are really low, six centigrade, uh, three centigrade, and the surface is about 25 centigrade. So, you know, it's really close. So I'm actually looking at at uh, Rickettsia right now, and I'm not seeing any clouds in the direct vicinity. Um, there's a huge frontal line, but that's regressing. That's that's at minus 34 centigrade. So I can assume that guy is at 34,000. That is probably Cirrostratus, but again, it's regressing. So I'm assuming by the time it's going to get there, it'll be gone. So just in case, I'm going to configure it to not have um, anything in there. So let's see. I'm, I'm looking at Rickettsia right now, and... I'm not really seeing any clouds, so let's just go ahead and um, put in case of no no METAR, uh, clear sky, and in case of no METAR, no cirrus. And that's only because I checked the weather status, and I'm not seeing clouds at at, um, at Totagagi, and I'm not seeing uh, cirrus clouds basically on the entire route there. So, I mean... If, if a METAR does happen to get into the mix and update our weather, well, then at, at that point, uh, that default will be overridden. But this is just if there's no other weather available, use what I observed on windy.com, which is no cirrus and no cumulus around uh, Rickettsia. Okay, um, because... The full moon is out. We should be able to do our um, our check here. So there's a P-tote cover check that's removed. I see it there on the left. So yes, that is. Tires inflated. The best that I can see, yes. Uh, oleo struts are extended. Uh, check the nose wheel and make sure that that's straight. And then we're going to have to skip the uh, cowling fasteners. We can't really do those. And then uh, obstructions cleared. Uh, we can't check the baggage compartment. Uh, fuel tanks, yep, they're full by control uh, by shift Z. Those, that menu will disappear in a couple minutes. Um, once I offloaded the 300-gallon tanks and put the 165-gallon tanks on. Uh, and dive fillets, we can't really check those either. So, um, at this point, we will... You see, I did finally remember to check the fuel tanks there, so they should, they should show up. We'll remove the chocks and hop in. Yep, they're there. Okay, and I'm actually going to um, skip over the entire startup sequence because this flight is going to be like four hours. The video is going to be long enough as it is. And yes, I realize that I made a very long pre-flight briefing. So um, without any other time wasting, uh, we'll come back right around for the engine check. Okay, here we are on uh, runway 22, and we're ready to do our engine checks now. Uh, so we're going to pump and hold the brakes, and then we're going to bring uh, the engines up to 2300. In real life, I would do it one at a time, but I have a uh, single throttle quadrant, so I can't do that. I really should invest in a double, though, because most most aircraft that I like to fly in simulator are two engine. Okay, uh, let's see. Left engine, 2300 RPM. Check. Uh, magnetos, we're going to check both of those. So we're both. Uh, that's right. Okay, now I could just go back to left. Wow, oh my gosh, I actually did it right. There we go. Nice. Okay, so, so magnetos, we know we're good. Those, that's as good a check as we're ever going to get here. Uh, proper propeller governors full forward, pull back for a 200 RPM reduction, and good, they come back. I'm 
going full forward again. Uh, check 2300 RPM. Close enough. Okay. M meter, check under 50 amps. And volt meter, check 24 volts. So we're good. Bring the throttles back to 1200. And now we're going to do the right engine. So up to 2300 RPM again. This time I'm concerned about the right engine. All right, so we're at 2300 there. Uh, magnetos check, so we're in both. Okay. Wow. Not bad. I don't want to say because I'm going to jinx it. That's right. And then we'll try for left. Oh my gosh, we actually got it to work. Okay, so that's left and back to both. Good. No, almost lose the engines because it slammed into off. Uh, okay, propeller governor is full forward. We're going to set for a 200 RPM reduction. Good, back to full forward again. Uh, tachometer, check 2300 RPM. And check back where we started. Ammeter under 50 amps, good. And voltmeter 24 volts, cool. Wow, that was the first time we ever had an uneventful engine check. I'm impressed. And brakes release. Cool. So uh, let's see. We're actually ready for takeoff now. So, um, all right. I'll go ahead and show putting in the numbers here, and then we'll go ahead and exit, just so you guys can follow along. Because um, I do, the, the star of the show really is Celestial Navigation. That's what makes all of this possible. So we're going to do our first site at the top of climb. So that's going to be uh, a point that I'm predicting at 18 degrees 10 minutes south and 148 degrees 15 minutes west. Okay, so my numbers look good in Skyview Cafe. We're anticipating on being there at 11.44. Um, let's see, ch checking my celestial log. Yes, that is correct. 11.44 is the time that I'm anticipating on being there. Uh, and that's the time that I have in Skyview Cafe. I've got UTC, so I'm good. So I actually chose a star earlier. Um, Believe it or not, we are so early in the night. It's 1100. Um, sunrise really won't occur until about uh, 1430. So we're we're a good three or four hours into night, and that's counting the fact that we are going to be sailing eastward at 300 miles an hour. So where I am right here, the sunrise is probably close to four hours away. Um, okay, so I'm going to take a look in the southeastern sky now. And the star that I liked the most, because it was very close to my track, um, was uh, Calcinetia. Let's see if I can find Calcinetia. It's a smaller one, and it's a southern constellation, so it's a little bit more tricky for me. Okay, I found it. So, um, it is... It looks like 19 Delta Sagittarius, which I'm not sure... I know Delta Sagittarius would mean it, it is the uh, fourth most visible star in Sagittarius. Um, but I don't know what 19 Delta means. Anyway, that's not important. It is a 2.7 magnitude star, so we can see it quite well. Um, I don't think I would shoot anything beyond a magnitude 3 star, and definitely not a 4. Okay, so uh, let's see. He is at uh, 114 degrees azimuth and 32 degrees 21 minutes. So let's see. Setting up for our latitude here, we're at 18 or we will be at 18, 10 minutes south, and we're going to be at still very mouse wheel, but not so much mouse wheel as we progress eastward. 
110, 20, 30, 48 degrees, 15 minutes west. And the azimuth is going to be 114 degrees. And the reason I chose uh, Caus Media, you know, as opposed to Sagittari not Sagittarius, uh, what's it called? Uh, Antares in Scorpio is because uh, Caus Media is actually at an uh, azimuth of 114, and our track is going to be at uh, 100 and. 16. So it's only two degrees off, which means this is almost a perfect speed star, which is why I chose it. I wanted something really good so that we can seriously pinpoint our type of climb. And uh, elevation is going to be 32 degrees, 21 minutes. Okay, and we're going to check everything, uh, including the time. We're good. We're still good on time. Uh, Kaus Media is at 114 degrees good and 32 minutes 20 seconds good and this is for a location of 18 degrees 10 minutes south good and 148 degrees 15 minutes west good okay we are set up for the shot and let's see it's 11 oh, we'll round up to 8 and takeoff is at 11.16. So I've got eight minutes to ponder my life's decisions and figure out if there's anything else that I want to do before taking off into an ocean uh, in the, from the middle of the ocean and heading towards an island with no reliable weather reports. Even in 2021. I'm going to bet that back in the day in the 1940s it was probably like... Um, Okay, what's the weather report over in uh, in in the Gambiers? And then the guy the guy is gonna say, "I talked to Johnny, and Johnny says that the sky is blue. Nothing else to report." And then I'd be like, "Great, that helps me out a lot." You know, so all right, uh, we'll pause until uh, until I realize something or it's time to go. When I say pause, I mean stop the video. Okay, we're less than one minute to go now, and you'll look if you look at the uh, altimeter, you'll see how low we are. Um, the Tahiti Airport is actually only five feet above sea level, which I seriously don't understand how they would allow something like that because that would get flooded in just about any storm beyond you know, just your monsoon rain events. Okay, 15 seconds to go. Move into the checklist here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Brake release. And I just have an ace up my sleeve that I'm keeping track of and we have that really weird um, uh, wind issue on takeoff. Nope, it was good. Nice. Well, it's refreshing to not have a uh, serious issue anymore. All right. Check our instruments. So let's see, landing gear is up and locked. Uh, temperatures. All right, losing a little bit of altitude here, um, which really shouldn't happen uh, unless the trim is set wrong. But anyway, there we go. Um, let's see. T um, manifold pressure, tachometer. Oil pressure, oil temperature, uh, fuel pressure, coolant air temperature, carburetor air temperature, generators, uh, ammeters, I guess you could say one, two, and voltmeter. We are good. Uh, setting climb power, throttles 40 inches. 
and propellers 2500 RPM. Takeoff time was uh, on time at uh, 11.16. That's correct. I keep thinking it's going to be 14.16, uh, but it's because we're, we're on such a long flight that it's going to be like this. Alright, we're going up fast now, and I can actually use uh, the island of Tahiti to figure out where we are. We want to go, there's like a narrow strip of land that we want to pass over. So I think we just did an about face here. We turned around, we're going towards uh, Tahiti um, not uh, uh Papeete. This is the city of Papeete, about 100,000 people in it, so quite a uh, metropolis down there. Okay, there's the airport we just took off from. This is pretty cool. It's not all the time you get to do stuff like this. Alright, speed established 165 miles per hour. And, nice, there's the central peak. Uh, doesn't look like any names are showing up, so I don't know what the name of that is, unfortunately. Alright, so yeah, we're, we're passing right over Papeete, so we're a little bit further north of track than, than I was anticipating, so that's just because if we had to turn around, if we went straight out, we would, we would be right on track. So let me see how many miles that accounts for. Oh, that's just two miles. That's nothing. I'm just going to do straight, straight on. That's within my sexist margin of error. Alright, we're still not trimmed up enough. Let's shape up here. We're going to be late for climb if we, if we can't go faster. Alright, there's 165 right there. Climbing again, and just to check the altimeter, I can see uh, mountain out the window, and yeah, that mountain is just about 5,000 feet high. So, yep, that uh, that equates. Good. Yeah, it's a lot different when you when you fly with a full moon. If I flew with a new moon, we wouldn't be able to see anything at the, the instant we left the peak. Okay, we've settled in at 165 miles per hour, so we're going to continue the checklist. Engine instruments check. Manifold pressure check. RPM check. Uh, oil temperature good. Uh, oil pressure good. Fuel pressure good. Uh, trim set. Yep. Fuel boost pumps both off. One, two. And landing lights off. Recognition lights is desired. We'll leave those on. And yes, I can see them because of the moon. Uh, we are ready until we near 12,000 feet. It's fun. I'm actually using the moon as like an artificial horizon right now. You know, its position on screen is telling me uh, 
what the plane is doing. Like, it looks like we're pitching down a little bit. So I'm going to guess that we're going a little bit faster than 165 now. Nope. Okay. Well, just a little bit. So maybe it's air currents and whatnot. All right, uh, let's see. There should be a little bit of a pinch. Um, now, interestingly enough, um, this island here, um, Tahiti, looks a lot like the astro not asteroid, the Kuiper Belt object, um, or Arokoth, which is what they originally named uh, Ultima Thule, but had to change it because of how that word is used in some contexts. Um, so. Uh, let's see, uh, Arokoth is a um, attached binary, so it's actually two objects that have kind of fused together to make a peanut-shaped object, and that's kind of what it looks like for uh, Tahiti. So I'm looking for that pinch, okay, there's the shore, between the two island pieces. Yeah, it's right there. So you can see there's like a little bit of a V in the ocean right that's the pinch between one between the main lobe of the island, which is in the west, and the um, auxiliary lobe, which is in the east. Or as they would say in the World War II era, auxiliary. The cupola houses the pilot and auxiliary equipment. Okay. Uh, we're at 10.5, so when we get up to 11.5, we'll continue with the checklist here. Oh, we're heading east. Uh, I think the air has, has calmed out a little bit, too, so we should be able to uh, turn more here. And yeah, as the forecast said, complete blackness above us. Beautiful. Okay, still on time, coming up to 11,500 feet. Uh, fuel boost bumps, one on, two on, good. Uh, O2 flow. That wasn't O2 flow. There we go. You'd think I'd be able to see it. I mean, you can easily see the blinker now, so if you if you didn't know what I was talking about when I said blinker, take a look now. You should be able to see it, regardless of what screen you're using here. Um, O2 pressure check. Good, and we just took a look at the blinker. It, it's working, yes. All right, I see the moon moving, so we have got to be, yeah, we just turned for some reason. Uh, so we're good. And we will turn the... Why can't I see it? Oh, there it is. We're going to turn the cockpit heat on. Because we are going uh, to a very high altitude. At 30,000 feet. It's minus 35 up there. All right, I can still see, I can still see the island of Tahiti right there. The goal would be to basically clip right across the, the edge, the far edge of that, and it looks like we're not going to come right across it, so we're a little bit off, but, but not by much. It's still very early on in the climb. Things are still looking good, and that's the end of the climb checklist.
there's there's the edge of the island. There's a point there. Let's see if I can cross correlate. Oh yes, that is um, Taltira. We're supposed to go right over Taltira. And let's see, that's a 45 degree angle right there. So it, it looks like we're going to be coming across it maybe at like a 60 degree angle. And we're at 12,000, no, 16,000 feet right now. So 12 degree angle at 16,000 feet, I think is a, uh, or no, 60 degree angle. Oh no, I, I know this trig identity. It's some um, 0.866. So it's going to be like 1.2 times our altitude. So that, that means we're literally three miles off the course right now. Uh, so let's fix that right now, right? I'm exactly where I want to be, basically. So let's just fix our heading here. And this time I am going to pay attention to the... Uh, I can see the heading indicator underneath the standby compass. So we shouldn't have to play the magnetic guessing game of UNOS again. That's a really good name for it. I don't think anybody has ever, like, they're saying UNOS in the magnetic dip, but I really like the idea of the magnetic guessing game called UNOS. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure there is an actual game called Uno, which means I need to be... Yeah, it's a card game. I need to be careful, because I'm going to get, like, copyright infringement. For doing that. Good. And um, I will go ahead, since we're in straight and level flight, I'm going to realign with the compass. There we go. Uh, perfect. So as long as we stay wings level, we're right on track. Okay, that's Tauntira. I don't think we're going to have any issue seeing those those islands out there. Uh, the first one is it's either Mahidia or Mahisha. And given that we're nowhere near um, Greece, I'm going to guess that it's Mahidia. Okay, that's the end of uh, Tahiti, so I'm going to take that down right now for the time, 11.31. Perfect, still on track here. Um, so Tahiti ended at 11.31. 31. Um, 11.30. Uh, okay. So we took off at 16. So that's exactly 15 minutes. So in 15 minutes, we traveled exactly uh, 40 miles. So 40 miles in 15 minutes means that we are going about 160 miles an hour. And that's exactly what I wanted to see. So our climb speed is our true speed. Now that will change the higher we get. But it looks like we're still good. Okay, one more thing that I wanted to mention about the horizon. So you may see that the horizon looks a lot more clear than it did last time. So so here's the deal. When, when VTARs report that the visibility is unlimited, there is a setting in... Um, in, uh, God, what is it? Uh, there is a setting in uh, FS Real WX that says if a weather station reports a sky as being, the visibility is being unlimited, don't really make it unlimited. Make it this generic value. You know, and it was something like 30 nautical miles. And I was like, no wonder why I couldn't see the islands from altitude so quickly. So so here's the deal, right? Am I, am I cheating by setting that number high up to 125 kilometers? Absolutely not. Here's why. I'm flying the Cessna 172 above the Chesapeake Bay. 
and I can see the Catoctin Mountains from the Chesapeake Bay. That's 125 kilometers. The stations are reporting that the sky is clear. So on that day, I was able to see 125 kilometers. The sky has been cleared before, it's been worse before. I'm saying it averages out to 125 kilometers. So that's my justification for why I'm, I, I bumped that number up from 30 kilometers to 125 kilometers. And I mean, yes, for in most cases when I've been on board an airliner, I could see landforms all the way to the horizon. Not all the time, but most of the time. So that's why I did that. I'm going for realism here, not easy things. Okay, uh, let's see. We're at uh, 22,000 now. So, 11.34. We've gone... Let's see, 16 to 34, that's, that's 18, yeah, 18 minutes. So let's see, 18 minutes into the climb, we're at 22,000. Is that right? Let's see, this is saying 19 minutes into the climb, we should be at 22,000. So I'm, I'm right on time. I was worried that we would be late because of how long it took us to start the start the climb really but we're good all right um let's see top of climb we should be directly a beam mahedia mahedia will be 23 miles off and we're going to be at eight miles high so that's a three to one so that's going to be roughly uh 20 ish degrees so Mahedia should be somewhere out here. I still don't think I can see it. Let's see, it is shaped... Wow, Mahedia is shaped like a pentagon. That's crazy. I, I've seen a hexagon island, now I'm seeing a pentagon island. And Tahiti's as close to a circle island as you're ever going to get. And Easter Island is a triangle island. That's crazy, getting all the shapes here. And we just need a square island. And I'm sure, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe F the main island of Fiji is uh, square enough to be considered a square island. Anyway, um... Let's see, still going up on, at the right speed, coming up on 25,000 now. Oh yeah, I, I want to do, um, look back and see, can we still see Tahiti? Um, wow, that was quick. Oh, yep, 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 I can see it. Just barely, I can see it. So, the beach is right about where our wing plane is right now. And you can see above the, uh, the cupola just to the left, you can see one arm of the beach. And directly, directly above the left tail is the uh, northern beach. It looks like we're drifting quite a bit. And, and I'm talking about wind drift. Not heading drift. Okay, coming up on 26,000, so I'm going to start getting really ready to execute my cruise checklist here. And I'm not expecting to accelerate much like last time, and the, the reason being is because, um, like I said, we're less about speed and more about fuel, fuel uh, consumption, saving fuel. Um, I was kind of so-so about stowing the, um, 
stowing the uh, coolant flaps previously because of how hard we were driving the engine, but we're not gonna be driving the engine hard at all. So I'm actually going to want to um, seal up those coolant flaps because there's the engine, it's, it's really cold out there. It's, uh, let's see, the carburetor air temperature right now is uh, minus 25. So that, yeah, that just gives you an idea. So I think it's generally about a 5C drop for carburetor air temperature, so it that means it's probably about minus 20 outside. Alright, let's look for Mahedia again. luck yet. Alright, just got a little bit of turbulence here. I think we're passing from one wind layer into another. Alright, just hit critical altitude, so the engine's spooling down now. Looks like we're at 170. I would normally want 160, but we're actually trying to start to level off now. Alright, so at 29.5, I'm going to uh, start pitching down, and then uh, once we pick up a little bit of speed and get to about 200 indicated, I'm going to pull the power back, and uh, things are going to get really quiet, almost in a spooky way, because you, kn you know we're going far this time. Alright, uh, time to level off. Not descent, come on, level off. All right, and um, let's see, our indicated that I'm expecting to follow is um, oh my god, 162. So it's time to pull the power back now. All right, manifold pressure, 32 inches. RPM, Okay, uh, that is good. Uh, let's see, next on the checklist, trim. Uh, we're descending, I don't want to descend. Uh, instruments, check. Uh, let's see, manifold pressure, RPM. Let's see. Uh, 
is this oil temperature, oil pressure, fuel pressure, carburetor temperature, uh, coolant temperature, generators uh, slash ammeter and uh, voltmeter are all good. Uh, fuel quantity monitor, um, still full obviously because we're pulling from the, well no, we put, pulled from the reserve, so yeah, we're back a little bit on the reserve. Okay, so we're gonna go to drop tanks. So let's see, at, uh, what is that, 11.43, uh, from reserve to drop tanks, okay. And I can actually see it. Drop tank, drop tank, perfect. All right, and we'll mess with the intercooler shutters in a minute. I wanna get my, uh, my climb site here uh, let's see, we're expecting to take it at 11.44, and it's time, right now. This is Kaus Media. Actual time of the shot was 11.44. See, the other one we're going to use is um, let's see, uh, what's the name of that star? Gamma Centaurus. You know what? I totally forgot to pay attention to where that star was. But I think we still have a zero offset. Yeah, that's close enough for zero. Okay. Mark star one. Uh, and then Star 2's name is Gamma Centaur Us. Uh, azimuth is going to be at 205 degrees, and the altitude is going to be um, 54 degrees 14 minutes. Okay, so 205. And then uh, 54 degrees. Fifteen minutes. And real quick, just we should be directly a be uh, a beam Mahedia right now. So per per what it said. Uh, I think we got it. That looks like land. Yep, definitely got it. Okay, uh, so I'll write that down. Uh, Eleven forty-six saw Mahedia, and we're gonna say that was uh, maybe thirty degrees. So we'll say um, minus thirty degrees and on time because that's this basically due north. So that's on time. All right, I need to get my second star set up here. Oh, that's so beautiful. I can see all the stars now. No, no dang serious clouds. Okay, um, so that's that's what it was then, is there's just no METAR available. Okay, 205 degrees and 54 degrees, 14 minutes. I have, yes, offset zero nautical miles, clear the shot and do the shot. Okay, we might be a little bit off here. Say... Maybe right there. Yeah, right there. Okay, actually, 
actual time of the shot, uh, 11.48. Okay, and we got an offset of negative five. Uh, so we are, let's see, five miles north-south from the course. That's almost within the margin of error, so I'm not gonna do any corrections at this point. All right, save my shots and plot start two. Okay, so we are slightly further north than we expected. Dang, it's a 60 degree 60 degree turn there. Also, it looks like we descended again. Tell us to climb back up again. Okay, uh, I need to get these things plotted. So from talk, we had a zero degree offset. Um, the azimuth is 114, so that means my line of position is going to be at 114 minus 90, or 24 degrees. Yep, and that just about goes right through Mahedia, so that's expected. Um, yep, 24 degrees. And we're going to save this is talk speed LOP. And then uh, one more here, and this guy is at 205 degrees, but it's negative, so 25 degrees. The offset is going to be uh, 5 nautical miles in 25 degrees, 5 at 25, there we go. Okay, and then, let's see, that's going to make a line of position of, I add 25 and 90, 115. And save, top, course, LOP. Perfect. And move that out of my temporary places of Google Earth. And, yeah, so, so my, um, my celestial navigation confirms my, my sighting of the island of Mahedia. Perfect. Okay, it looks like we are still descending. So we don't have the trim set right. I really want to fix that ASAP and get into a good cruise profile. We, we, we haven't done that in a while. Okay, uh, take the first shot at top of climb. I did that, so we're going to watch the heading indicator. We still need to correct a little bit to the left here. Watch the airspeed indicator. Yeah, that's about the airspeed that I was expecting. Um, just need to... Um, Watch that against our stall speed. You know, obviously don't want to stall. Um, we shouldn't be coming anywhere near there until until we fly a speed profile at five. When you're flying five, that's that's when you have to start looking out for your stall speed. Uh, watch for islands. I just did that. Let's see. The next island isn't coming until top one. That's going to be here, here, too. I guess that's here, here, too. I don't, I don't know. Uh, let's see, chart update. I can't do that yet because I don't know what our speed is. All right, did I finally reach thirty thousand? No, we're still at twenty nine. Let's try and give just a little bit more gas here to get back, get me up to 30,000, please. Okay, fuel consumption rate in gallons per hour. 
Uh, we are expecting that to be, um, I think it's like 59. Yeah, 59 gallons per hour. Total usable uh, non-reserve fuel. So we so we took 12 for the climb, and we've been in cruise for nine minutes. So let's see, nine minutes at 50 some gallons per hour. 59 for nine minutes uh, means we burned. Um, let's see. Four gallons? No, some, something's not right. We've been up here for nine minutes, and we're burning 59 gallons per hour. There we go. Okay. Oh, of course. So it's a gallon a minute. Nine, nine gallons. Plus 12 gallons means, means we've burned 21 gallons um, burned in total. So that's how much is consumed. We started with 629 gallons, so that means we have 608 um, gallons remaining uh, with reserve, and then less reserve, it's going to be uh, 558 gallons. Uh, the distance flown is gonna be, let's see, 10 minutes beyond top of climb, 10 minutes at what I'm assuming is uh, 300 miles per hour. Uh, is gonna be, 50 miles, so we've flown 50 miles plus 92, so we've flown 142 miles has been flown. Uh, 1,029 was the distance of, of the entire flight, uh, which means if I subtract out, um, it gives us 887 miles left. Uh, interpolated position, Let's see, we're 10 minutes beyond, what did I say, 50 miles or something beyond? So that means our interpolated position is roughly 18 degrees, 24 minutes south, and 147 degrees, 32 minutes west. Is it possible to return home to base? Uh, yes, it is at all times. Okay. So now very quickly, I'm going to get set up for um, my talk plus 30 minute fix. So I'm assuming that we're going to go at 300 miles per hour. So let's see, um, talk plus 30. Uh, assumed latitude is going to be... Nineteen degrees, five minutes south, and a hundred and hundred forty six degrees, nine minutes west. So I'm going to advance this ten, twenty, thirty minutes, and the new location is going to be nineteen five south and a hundred and 46 degrees, uh, 9 minutes west. Okay. All right, have we finally arrived at 30,000? Yes, it looks like we have. Okay. So now let's try it again. Right now, we're going to bring, and remember, this is self sustaining, so we're bringing power back to 32 inches right now. And 2050 RPM. Now all I got to do is just mess with that trim wheel until we stop going up and down. Oh yeah, we should also close everything up now. Again, pitching up even more.
Let's see, those are... Those are still open. Okay, those are closed. Alright, these guys close them, and the uh, oil coolers... Actually, I, sh I should be able to see that from that side. Yeah, those are still open. Still open. Still open. Still open. Okay, now I think it's closed. So it's one, two, three, four, five clicks, I think. Yep, we are fully streamlined now. And it looks like we have finally leveled off. I'm still keeping an eye on it, though. But at least I can do other stuff now, like prepare my next site. So, let's see. I want something that's pretty much straight in front of me. And I'm going to be following a... Um, Azimuth of about a hundred and hundred and fifteen degrees. So in Skyview Cafe, that's going to be uh, two hundred. No, wait, three hundred fifteen plus one hundred eighty. 295. Yeah, we'll just use Cos Australis again. Oh, wait a minute. No, I use Cos Media. Yeah, Media is even, even better. We'll, we'll stick with Media. Um. Azimuth is going to be 113, and it's going to be an elevation of 41 degrees, 3 minutes. And then, uh, let's see, we want something that's 90 degrees from that, so 2, 9, or 3, so that's like 13 in Skyview Cafe. Let's go with Epsilon Centaurus. That's going to be at um, 197. Degrees and 53 degrees, zero minutes. Okay. all this information in now. So the first one is uh, Kaus Media, and the second one, uh, let's see, Epsilon Centaurus. 
Uh, azimuth is going to be 113 degrees, altitude 41 degrees 3 minutes. Uh, and then uh, the other star, 1, 9, or 7 on the azimuth, and the altitude of 53 degrees 0 minutes. Okay, so just to confirm, let's see, I have these plotted, I have the offset in there, so we're good, we can clear the shot, clear star one, star two, and we're gonna go to uh, assumed latitude of 19 degrees, five minutes south, and then 146 degrees, uh, nine minutes west, A uh, azimuth of 113 degrees, and 53 degrees zero minutes. No, 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 I crossed it again. It keeps happening. 41 degrees, 3 minutes. Crossed it with the second star. 41 degrees, 3 minutes, and 113 degrees. 19 degrees, 5 minutes south. 146 degrees, 10 minutes west. We're good. Time is uh, going to be taken at 14, so we, we have nine minutes to go. And just in case, I'm going to start looking out for our first island. Right, or it's not the first island; it's the top top one. Oh, oh yeah, there should there should be like a little reef or something down here too, I think. Um, so we can try looking for that. And we seriously got to fix our uh, heading. I've I've seen it hap I've seen it go so far south that to be honest, I want to go all the way to east now. And then if I see it drift south again, we're going to start using uh, rudder trim.
oh my gosh, I can actually see everything because of the full moon. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get hyper vision now. This is this is the best way to do it is to turn all lights off. Your eyes will become so powerful. Check our altitude real quick. I guess that I can't see. Or no, oh no, I can see it. I just got mixed up on which gauge it was. All right, I think everything is good right now. We're just uh, waiting uh, for five more minutes for us to get to our shock position. We'll do some stargazing in a couple minutes once uh, once I got everything straightened out for the 30 minute um, 30 minute fix. So the other thing that we're going to have to do this flight, I think, is uh, figure out how long it's going to be until we uh, we switch over uh, to um, off of the drop tanks. So we're burning at 59 gallons an hour, and um, we have 330 gallons in the tank. So that's going to equate to oh, that's that's over. That's over five hours, assuming that we're at 59. And if we're not, we're gonna we're gonna find out mid-flight. All right. Yeah, I th I think I I think I want to do some rudder trim. It's pretty much time for our shot now, so. Let's see what that does. Okay, that's definitely way too much rudder trim in, in, in this in this direction. So I can't use rudder trim then because all I did was was um, move it one click, and and that was enough to start that crazy turn. All right, we're one minute from the start of sight. Confirming that we're shooting Kaus Media at 113 degrees, uh, 41 degrees, five minutes or so.
Five, four, three, two, one. Starting the shot. This is Kaus Media. Whoa. That was a lot larger offset than I expected. I'm going to have to figure out how to get really comfortable on, on my cruise here because this is a lot like what it's going to feel like when we're on legs 10 and 11, the super long ones. Okay, we're 40 miles off. Jeez. Okay, so 19, 5, 146, 10. Uh, and that was, let's see, that was negative 40. Let's see, actual time of the shot was at uh, 12.14. All right, so from, from that position, we're gonna go in the opposite direction. So, oh man, we're going, we're going really, really slow. 113 plus 180 is 213. So 293 back 40 miles. All right, now I'm going to swing this in out. So 293 will become 203. Thirty minute fix. Speed LOP. Okay, I've got that plotted. We'll click star one. You can see we're way back here. We're expecting to be here, we're there. So, uh, the next thing I'm going to do, man, this, this is so tough without autopilot, man, it's, it's like the slightest, the slightest yoink of the trim wheel will send, will send the craft going high speed in the other direction. That, that's not a good trim system. Uh, let's confirm that I have that offset. Recorded, I do, so we're going to clear and we're going to set up for the second star, which is at 197. And 53 degrees, zero minutes. And starting the shot, this time it's going to be at uh, 1218. Okay, well, at least we're on track. That's what I was mainly concerned about. You know, with all this flip-flopping around of the heading indicator. All right, we've got it. Actual time of the shot, 12.18. And let's see, the offset. Looks like about 15 miles off. That's not, that's not bad. So this is 19 degrees, 5 minutes south, and 146 degrees, uh, 9 minutes east. Okay, and we, we took the shot uh, at 197 degrees, 
uh, and we have a lower altitude, which means we're going to be negative again. Yeah, negative 15. So it's not 197, 17. 17 off for 15 nautical miles. Uh, and turning this will become 106 degrees. Wait a minute. 17 should be 107. Okay, yeah, I probably could have picked a better star this time. 30 minute fix uh, course LOP. Now, here's a question. Let's see, it's going to be like six minutes. Do I need to advance? Uh, no, that, that's that's not gonna that's not gonna cause much offset. All right, plot star two. So we're way back here and we're north of course. So that means one of two things: one, the simulation is not behaving as it should, or two, uh, we're not following the, or two, we've got serious winds, serious serious winds. So it, it took half an hour to go from top to where we are now, which is 107 miles. That was 30 minutes, which means we're going 214 miles an hour, not 300 miles per hour. At this rate, geez, that's way off of what the POH said. At this rate, I have to assume it's winds. Okay, we are supposedly one engine out now because we've we've hit talk. I forgot to mention that. So we're we're one engine out to to Totagegi. Jeez. Um I'm gonna have to re rework the, the timing here. Uh let's see. So we did 108 miles in 30 minutes. So that means we're doing 216 miles per hour. Ground speed. Um, we've got right around 800 and 30 miles left in the, the thing. So, grabbing my slide roll here. Let's see, we've got 830 miles remaining. know how fast we're going to go at, or how long it's going to take at 216 miles an hour. Definitely less than four hours. So let's, let's start with four as a uh, reasonable approximation. Uh, so, let's say it does take four hours from this point. We're burning what I believe to be 59 gallons an hour. So, in four hours, we will have burned 240 gallons. Um, and let's see, consulting my fuel chart. See, this is why I made the fuel chart. This is the first time I'm legitimately consulting it to see what the situation is. Halfway between talk and talk one, we're going to be at, um, let's see, burning 70, 65 gallons. So I need to add 64 and 12. 
so that's going to be 76 gallons plus so 240 plus 76 gallons means that my new anticipated burn is um, 316 so that's that's half a tank that's not concerning uh, what is concerning is my wind estimates are hugely wrong so yeah hopefully that'll go away because otherwise it means we're going to be up here for many hours uh, it also means that we might lose the ability oh shoot we might lose the stars before we hit LOP intercept. That could also be a serious problem. Uh, we'll need to monitor the wind speed and see if it quits, because uh, that's important. Okay, I need to uh, get through my checklist now, coming back up here, heading indicator, I'm fixing, we continue to drift south, uh, which is interesting that we uh, were sh still showing north of track. Um, that's pretty strange. Oh yeah, you know what I also need to do is figure out, oh, I, didn't, I didn't do this yet. Um, I skipped, I skipped the second part of the checklist. So airspeed indicator, yeah, it's where it was before. Watch for islands, not quite yet. Uh, chart update, let's see. We took our position at um, 14 and it's 27, so it's been 13 minutes and we're assuming that we're going at 200 miles an hour. Um, so let's see, 13 minutes is gonna put us 45 miles. Uh, beyond where we were. Dang, this is so much slower. Which means we're probably now right around 18 degrees, 48 minutes south and 146, one minute west. Um, and then continuing on, let's see, fuel consumption rate. Yeah, we did that. Total usable non-reserve fuel. So 59 gallons, we've been up here for 40, 40 minutes at 59 gallons an hour. So we burn 40 gallons, what I expect, plus 12 for the climb. So 52 gallons has been burned. So we started with 629, minus 52 will leave us with um, 600, 577. Uh, with reserve, without reserve, 527. Uh, the distance flown is going to be, uh, let's see, 
talk, which is 92 plus 157 miles. So that's going to sum up to um, 200 and 248 miles traveled uh, and on a flight that is 1,029 miles. That means there's roughly 750 remaining, which I'm, I literally just did earlier. Um, let's see, distance remaining. Interpolated position, I just called that off. Yes, it's possible to return to home base. Do every celestial checkpoint. Take your shots at absolute times. Update the field chart. Um, I can't do that yet because we're still using the, uh, the drop tanks. I can do that once we uh, once once our fuel level starts to drop. Point. Okay, here's what I skipped. Do every checkpoint during the flight. Calculate our true altitude. So let's see. We're at 29, 2984. So that's point, 0.06. Yeah, 0 0.06 times a thousand, so that's 60 feet plus the indicated. So we're, our indicated right now is uh, what we climbed up again somehow. 30,000, 30,820. So we're at 30,880. Uh, find true altitude by setting E6B. Oh, that's another way of doing it. Calculate actual ground speed. I did that. It's like 200. Uh, now I want to actually calculate the wind direction and speed. So let's let's say uh, let's see. Going back to the um, nav log, our temperature in this leg is minus 35. So if I go to 30,000 feet and line up minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 35. Now I can convert between indicated and true airspeed. So we're going 155 indicated, which means our true airspeed is actually 260 miles per hour. Okay, so now at this point, what I can do is I can compare, um, I, oh my gosh. My uh, orientations has been so bad the whole time watching this gauge that uh, I can't really, um, I can't. I don't have a reliable enough number to really estimate what what the track of the wind is, but I can estimate what how we're affected by. It. So we're doing 216 across the ground, and we're doing 260 in the air, which means we have a headwind of 44 miles per hour, and that's a headwind component. We don't know what our crosswind component is yet. We'd have we'd have to we'd have to you know actually follow the the heading indicator a lot better in order to get that crosswind drift. All right, I think now we can probably start to look for. Uh, let's see, what's the name of that island? Oh yeah, here here too. Let me just make sure everything is closed. So the coolant flaps are closed. Shutters are closed and check the oil. Yeah, oil shutters are closed. So we are streamlined.
can't see anything. Alright, I just touched my uh, trim wheel again, but this time it's on my yoke, so hope hopefully that works. I'm not seeing us tilt over to the side very quickly anymore. In fact, we're still we're still going back the wrong way, so. I should start getting set up for talk one. So it's going to be at 1244. Uh, talk one is going to be at uh, 1959 and 14402. 1959 and 14402. Yeah, that that's, seems to be working. So let's let's do it again on the trim wheel and see what happens then. Just keep doing that until I start heading back the other way. And I mean way the other way, like beyond 60 degrees, because I haven't seen that yet. Okay, I think I'm all set now. So let's see. We need something that's at 2, 9, or 5 again. Ooh! Jupiter and Saturn are coming up. I can use them. Uh, but they're not high enough yet, so so a little bit later we can do that. So two nine or five. Antares, we can use Antares. It's going to be at 117 and altitude of 74 degrees, 26 minutes. Possibly the highest star that I've shot yet. All right, we're still going over, so I'm going to tick it up. Now we're up to three, three ticks of the trim wheel. really fast now. Four, five, six ticks of the trim wheel. All Other guy, uh, so that's two, nine or five. Now one nine or five, which is going to show up as fifteen on here, and that would be a Gina. Six degrees, 54 minutes. Okay. Playing hardball now. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. See how you like that. And I'm going to do that too.
let's uh, confirm that we've got the site here. Oh, I did I did not copy it down. Negative 15 off course is 15 miles. Okay. And now we've got all the other information here. So we're going to clear the shot. Clear star 1, star 2. All right, now we're going to really wrap it up. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. If we still go to the right, then I'm going to go all in. Just swipe, 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 swipe uh, endlessly until I realize that literally nothing is happening. updating position here 19 degrees 59 minutes south and 144 degrees uh, zero minutes west azimuth 195 degrees and the altitude 46 degrees 54 minutes Six fifty. So it's only scary this flight because I don't know what my fuel burn rate is. When we check our when we check our tank levels uh, after landing, that will tell us whether or not we can relax these these restrictions that we're putting on ourselves to try to burn less fuel. Um, let's see, one seven. Oh, my gosh, one seventeen going to do Kaos Media first, and we don't have much time left. Alright, 117 and 7426. Kaos Media, Antares. Seventy four twenty six one seventeen twenty south one forty four east. Good. So 43.30 is going to be the time of the shot. All right, here we go, swiping endlessly. Are you doing anything, Trimble? Are you doing absolutely anything? It looks like absolutely nothing has happened. So that's totally ineffectual. All right. Ah, going back to this game. about 30 seconds to go. Oh yeah, we should have an island. Here, here too, should be uh, down here. All right, we gotta take the shot. And we're behind. That's not the only thing that's behind.
Okay, so at this point, I think it's pretty clear that um, we have uh, some serious issues, both with controlling the plane uh, and with uh, maintaining our current track. So, so here's the deal. Um, we're traveling so slow right now that um, We're traveling so slow that it's going to be sun up by the time we get to Totegegi. Now, there's lots of islands surrounding Totegegi because it's the Gambiers. So, minus 75. That's the highest offset we have ever seen. And yeah, it confirms that we, we, have, a, we have a serious headwind. So, um, so, we should be able to sight land and do it the old-fashioned way. Now, if this was Easter Island, at this point, I would be no-go. I would say we, we can't do it. The sun, the sun will rise so far back from our LOP intercept that we won't be able to get an LOP intercept off of Easter Island. So at this point, I would say it's over. Turn around. You're going back to Tahiti. But like I said, because we have lots of islands, we're going to press it. Dang, that's far back. So 117 degrees plus 180 is going to be uh, 300, 29 or 7. So 29 or 7 back 75 miles. And let's see, I'm going to twist this so it becomes 207. I'm probably going to have to drag this way out. Because who the heck knows where we are now? Top one speed LOP. Okay, well, the trim hasn't seemed to have busted now, so let's continue giving it inputs and we'll just see what happens. Okay, and then the other star. Uh, one nine or five elevation forty six degrees fifty four minutes. And I need to take down that time. Uh, it was on it was a few seconds late, but other than that it was okay. Minus 75 miles for the offset. That gives us a... Uh, yeah, that, that speed. Okay. All right, we got to take the second star. 195, uh, 4655. I have the shot clear it, and this is a Gina. Amazingly enough, we've still happened to maintain our on course for for two for two points. So I think we can. I think I will solve the wind. I haven't done that yet, and I I'm, I think we can do it because we've been stable enough. So we are lower, which again means that we're going to be north, of course. So the azimuth is 195, so the, dis the distance is going to be 15. I think it's 15 degrees for 15 miles. Yep. Okay, 15 degrees for 15 miles off. And then that's going to be 105. And this is top one course LOP. So if we were actually on course, the star that I'm about to plot would pass right through the bubble. And you can see it's a little bit off the bubble. 
So that is quite interesting. Um, also, it means that we should be right about now. How many minutes has it been? Um, let's see. We're doing we're doing like four, three to four miles a minute. It's been five minutes, which means we've gone uh, five times four, twenty miles. Ah, so okay. How many miles off is that? Here, here too should be twenty eight miles, and we're eight miles high, so that's a three to one, or about 12 degrees, so we should be able to see here, here too, right about here. Assuming that our uh, celestial navigation is correct. Holy cow. What the heck's just going on? Still make sure we're facing the right direction. Yeah, we are. As correct as it's been. Let me try to get this math a little bit better here. So, all right, we took the we took the shot at 44, and it's 51, which means it's been uh, seven it's been seven minutes, and in seven minutes, or let's set the dial to the speed here. We go we're going about 216 miles per hour per ground speed. Uh, and it's been seven minutes, so we'll travel 20, 25 miles. Yeah, it, it really needs to be straight off the nose. So we're going, we're going at about 100 degrees right here. From our present location, it should be 198, which is right here. It, the island should literally be here. Is the moon still up? Yeah, it is. Because otherwise I wouldn't be able to see my, my plane here. Let's see, degrees, a tan of... Uh, 1 over 5. Eleven degrees, yeah. So eleven degree dip from the horizon. Now at about a hundred and ten degrees. It should be right there. Time to start preparing for the next waypoint. And we're still going off to the right. So I want to hit this again.
All right, uh, let's go on back here to our direction. Heading indicator, airspeed indicator, still stable. Watch for islands, I sure tried and didn't go very well. Uh, let's see, chart update. I just did that with directly a beam here, gear two. one the other way, because it seems like now we're, we're biasing to the left. Okay, uh, fuel consumption rate is going to be um, 59 gallons per hour. Total usable non-reserve fuel, how long have we been up here? Uh, we've been up here for one hour plus talk, so that's that means we've burned 72 gallons uh, so that's 629 minus 72 gallons. Uh, so that's going to be 557 with reserve, 507 less reserve. Ah, come on. I just can't win. It's like I, I want to go one way or the other way. Will you just fly straight? Getting mad now. I need to be careful though, I don't want to cause a stall. Okay, uh, about the fuel room, oh god, come on. For god's sakes, can, can we just, can we just get an autopilot in this thing? God, seriously? Alright, amount of fuel remaining, less reserve, good. Uh, distance flown. Um, how far did we fly? Well, we should be pretty close to top one right now. So that's going to be 400 miles, which means 600 miles remain. Oh yeah, I need to get this time written. Shoot, I didn't get the shot time written down. I think it's probably about four minutes after. So that would have been uh, 12.48. What are you doing? See, I, I was like, I'm going to manhandle the plane, and the plane's like, okay, put you in a death spiral. Let's see, offset, negative 15. Of course, 15 miles. 
So the one thing that's good, apparently, is our ability to maintain track, which is very strange. Everything else is, is to hang with. Oh my god, that's floor heat. Maybe that's why, it's because I was never I was never actually touching the actual rudder trim. There's the rudder trim. Let's, let's update our speed. Um, distance remaining, interpolated position, yep, it's possible to return to home base. Uh, can't update the fuel chart. Uh, true altitude wouldn't have changed other than the fact that I'm going up and down like crazy. Uh, let's see, calculate actual ground speed from the previous site. That I can do. So in one hour, and this should be exact, in one hour we travel. 220 miles. So we are going 220 miles an hour. Which means I expect the flight to take slightly over three hours now. What are you doing? can't see my trim wheel. We may have just gone into 360. Let me see what, what our heading is right now. Uh, not quite. Okay, for some reason the trim is, is as strong as a primary control surface. That, that shouldn't happen, but it apparently is. Alright, I need to, we're just going to return to, to, to level trim for now. Right there. That's dead center.
All right, are you gonna fly level now? Still wanna go off to the left. I think we almost got it. Try one or two more clicks here. Do I even dare to try to set up my position now? So, 115 at 298, so 115 miles from now is 120. One, So talk one hour, 30 minute fix. It's going to be 10, 20, 30. You know, the thing, the, the, the one thing that, that's keeping me happy and sane here is it seems like this isn't, we're, we're actually doing stellar. Forgive the pun. We're doing stellar with navigation. It's flying the plane right now. That's the that's the absolute pain. And it seems like we've almost got it. That was starting to look like the King's new car when they were in that police chase and the, the just look up the video, the King's new car. It's like a YouTube poop from like 2008 and and the car just goes everywhere when, when the when the police car, the King gets a Toyota hybrid and um, he'll uh, get caught by a cop car. And the at, there's like one point where, where it just goes all over the screen, you know, with, with unrealistically all over the screen like as much as it possibly could so that's what it feels like to me uh, 
over these past few minutes. All right, we've got four minutes to get this star set up here. And I really don't want to lose my one good thing that's going on right now. So let's see, 115-ish degrees. Um, yeah, we can shoot Saturn. That's fun. We can actually look at something for once. Um, all right, so Saturn... is going to be at uh, what is that? 112 degrees and 21 degrees 14 minutes and then let's see add 90 so that's what is that? 1, 9 or 5 again so it's 15 degrees Rigel Cantoris is, is very well set up for this. Rigel Kent is at uh, 204 degrees and uh, 46 degrees, 48 minutes. quick here, so it's 20, 20 degrees, 4 minutes south, and 143 degrees, 34 minutes. Uh, azimuth is going to be one twelve. Twenty-one fourteen for the elevation. Okay, I have the offset of fifteen miles. Yes, I do. Okay, clear the shot and clear. Make sure I have the. Yes, I do. Clear star one, star two, and we have one minute to go. Clearing up. Uh, should, there should be another island down there. Anuanarto. Anuanarto. Okay. Stop it! Freaking wind! Oh my gosh! Just never, it never relents. It's just like. Oh, let's let's push them 30 degrees this way and see what happens. Ridiculous. It's not how turbulence works up here. I'm a little concerned that I can't see the island because it's really thinning out cloud-wise. Okay, just about time for the shot. Two, one, now. Okay, so this shot I'm expecting to be bang on and that basically means where where I think we are, not where we should be. But the good news is, at least I know where I, where I, at least I think I know where we are. Yeah, we're we're right on. We're 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 maintaining speed. We we should be. That means we should be directly a beam onto an Arto. The question is, are we north or south of it? really quick so 112 minus 90 is going to be 22 oh man Saturn Saturn is a perfect speed start perfect exactly 90 degrees this is one hour 30 minute fix 
uh, speed LOP. All right, so um, plot Saturn, and then to get the I haven't copied any of this down. Offset zero, uh, star one is Saturn. Uh, 112 and 21 degrees 14 minutes. Actual time of the shot was at 13, 14. Uh, star 2 name is uh, Rigel Cantorus and the azimuth is 204, 46 degrees 48 minutes. Alright, quit. 204. Forty six degrees forty eight minutes. All right, clear the shot and take the sight. All right, so we're, we're just a little bit off here, but not again, not not bad at all. I can't believe that I'm managing to fly this straight. See, the thing is, like. I, Normally it would average out because I'm trying to maintain one heading, so I'll go from side to side, except for the fact that we've been biased left this whole time. So I'm going to bet when I turn down, we're going to be at like 30 degrees in, towards north. But that's that's where it is. So let me get the shot time written down. We'll call it 13, 16. That's at least when, when I had... Um, given up and assumed that we have it dead on. Um, so let's see, we are shooting a southern star, and we have a, yeah, negative 30, so, so we're further north, so we need to look further south for this thing. Uh, negative 30, which means we have an offset of 30 miles, and we're now 20% missed. Okay, now, now we are starting to build up, so we're further north. So I can't really make a correction now because our our heading is all over the place. So I need to actually get straight. And then once I get straight, then we can worry about you know what what I'm going to do. So um, is that all the information? No, I need to I need to plot I need to plot my my uh, my north south miss. So. 20 and 5, 20 degrees 5 minutes, and 143 degrees 35 minutes. Then it was 204, but it's negative, so it's going to be 24, and we're going to be off uh, 30 miles. So 20, 24 plus 90 is 114. Save one hour thirty minute fix course LOP. So I'm going to save and drag both of these guys up out of the you will get deleted folder. And because I was so far off, now I have to extend my speed LMP so that it actually crosses my course LMP. And yeah, we really, 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 really should should see um, what is this thing called? Anuanarto. Seriously, for goodness sake! There's three islands out there too. There's also Anu Anuanuruga, Anuanuruga, and Nuku. To pee pee. We'll to pee pee. Alright, where the heck? 
are you guys? Oh yeah, let me make sure I'm heading the right direction. Because I haven't even taken a look at... Oh, yeah. We're heading straight for them, I think. And it looks like we're going south now. Yeah, we're going south. Well, that's actually good, because that gets us closer to being on course. So let's see, where we are, 150... Yeah, 150. That's why we couldn't see them. It's because we were we were dead ahead of them. So they should they should be right about here. Uh, I think I got something right here. That's a small one, but I think I got something. sure that we're back on course here. Almost. really spot that thing? I still can't tell if that's a cloud or an island. I think, I think it might be a piece of cloud. Seriously, nothing? All right, how far are we from these guys? Oh, um, 50, oh, 50 miles. Oh man, they're, they're, of course that's why I didn't see them. They're way out there. Very close to the horizon. They're probably about where the furthest clouds are, way up there. Let me average speed between the last shot and the current shot. So we did 120 miles in one hour. Sorry, 120 miles in 30 minutes. Oh good, we're, we're going a little bit faster. We're going 240 miles an hour now. just too distant for us to see right now. I think if it were daytime, we could see them, but nighttime, it's really tough. Because color, color vision is the first thing to go, and that's, that's what I'm relying to spot them. The islands are either yellow or green, and the clouds are white. But because of the moon at night, everything looks white. Uh, maybe I can look at the... I might be able to figure out what my drift is by looking at the... Those clouds are pretty low. So can I see any drift? Yeah, that's a lot of drift, actually. That's like 30 degrees of drift. So the direction... 
it looks like the direction we're actually heading from is like 40 degrees off the the uh, ship here. Jeez. That's crazy. All right, let's set up for talk two. Because that's what's coming up next. And I'm going to have to make another chart because I'm running out of room here because my, my scratch pad isn't the way of what I'm doing here. So talk two is going to be at 243444. Um, we still want to be at a course of about 115. Yeah, we're going too far to the south now. So that's going to be... That's exactly 100. Saturn is exactly 100 degrees. Whoa. Guys, this might be the end of the METARs right here. This this might be where, where things get really sketchy for weather. Man, that looks really ominous. It's all blackness. It's just black abyss. Oh my gosh. We're gonna go instrument flying if, if... Dang. First I like the clouds, or first I hate them, now I like them. Oh man. Well, there's always the stars. I guess when, once we get away from them, I'll turn the light back on. Um, so we want 100 14 degrees, so that's going to be 24 plus. Alright, so I want 194. Saturn's actually not that good a, a shot right now. Actually, wait. I forgot, we're past TAC 1. We're between TAC 1 and TAC 2. So we're our track is now 113 degrees. So the opposite of that is going to be two, 293. So I need something on Skyview Cafe that says 293. Alright, this is a bright one. 38 Zeta Sagittarius. It's actually a magnitude 2.5 star, if you can believe that or not. Assumed latitude. Oh shoot. Um, I didn't update it. I only updated the time. 21 degrees 42 minutes south. 21 42 minutes south. One thirty-nine degrees. 43 minutes west. Okay. Now, let's try again. Uh, you know what? We'll do Saturn again. That makes a difference. So we're going to do Saturn. Azimuth is going to be, wait a minute, 27, no, 278, not 288, I want 294. Forget it, forget it. Chaos Media, again. Chaos Media is at uh, 295, so that's 100 and it's about 116 degrees is what it rounds to. And the elevation is 67 degrees, zero minutes. Okay. And then, uh, let's see, that was 116. So now I want something at about 206. Which is going to subtract out to 26 degrees. 
the Gina. The Gina is going to be at uh, 205 degrees and 42 minutes, 42 degrees, 10 minutes. How much time do I have? Oh, I got loads of time. It's because I stopped doing my checklist. Okay, I've got the shot clear and star one, star two. 21 degrees, 42 minutes south. And 139 degrees. 43 minutes east, west, and 116 degrees, 67 degrees, zero minutes. All right, check everything, 2142, 139.43, and 116 degrees, 67 degrees. Okay, we got it. But what we don't got is our heading which is, again, way off. Yeah, it seems like it's it's going to be, you know, we're, we're going out of control to the north, or we'll just keep slowly slipping south. That really sucks. So we're at, uh, uh, no, we still want to be actually 102, because the compass heading we want to follow right now. That's right there. Well, okay, with, with this amount of clouds, this will allow me to see islands and also maintain visual reference to something. So that's, that's good. Th this is the ideal situation right here where there's hardly any clouds to block anything. Welcome to the Eastern Pacific, yo. Uh, and uh, yet something so that you can latch on to, uh, to seeing. But although I did say that I was going to turn the light off again. Oh my gosh, I can see everything. Alright, how much time do I have left? Uh, nine minutes. Let's crush the checklist. Heading indicator is good. Airspeed indicator. Figures and turn it back on again. Airspeed indicator is good. Uh, no islands to watch for at this time. Uh, chart update. We are. Let's see, at 240 miles an hour, it has been 20, 25 minutes, which means we would have traveled 100 miles from uh, top one and a half, if you will. So that probably means we're right around 20 degrees, six minutes south, and 141 degrees, 56 minutes west. And I think... <clears throat> I was going to say, I think we're stable enough that I might be able to introduce a correction now. And of course, what happens? Wind kick. Unrealistic simulator. I will protest. Okay. Uh, that's what I get for not going to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, but unfortunately, there's no World War II fighters in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. It seems that they have a... Uh, they have an obsession with new glass cockpits that nobody can afford, you know. Come on, guys. If you're a normal person getting into aviation, you're going to choose a plane that's 40 years old. That's just how it works. 
Uh, okay. Um, and our longitude about 141 degrees 55 minutes. Consumption rate 59 gallons per hour. Total usable non reserve fuel is going to be, let's see, 1335. So we are, um, let's just round up, right? So 1435 is, this is talk two. So we're, we're two hours from liftoff, which means we would have burned 120 gallons, which is going to go up to 132 gallons. Um, yeah, 132 gallons is what's burned. So with 629 to start, 497 remain, 447 remain left, less reserve. Uh, total distance flown, I'm anticipating on being um, 530 miles, which means uh, just about 500 miles remain. So we're just now about halfway there. Um, what else here? Let's get that up so I don't lose track of time. Interpolated position, I just called that out. Is it possible to return to home base? Yes, at all times. Uh, and we are ready for the celestial checkpoint at uh, 44. So we've got eight minutes to go. And just to confirm all the information, 21 degrees, 42 minutes south, and 139 degrees, uh, 45 minutes east, and 116 degrees, 67 degrees, zero minutes south. And do we have? I do not have it entered in, in my chart. That's that's where the time's going to get chewed up. Kaus Media, um, 116 degrees and 67 degrees zero minutes. Start to Agena. 205 degrees for the azimuth and 42 degrees 10 minutes for the altitude. Okay, now we're ready. So we've got just about five minutes to go now. of Timitagi is going to be about 110 miles uh, and uh, 40 degrees off our nose. Given how clear it is, I should be able to see Timitagi. I mean, there's literally no clouds out there. I figure I would be able to see it. You know, with the moon and everything. Maybe it's just too small. Um, oh, it's an atoll. That's why. Yeah, maybe five miles in diameter, but the maximum width at any location is a third of a mile. Yeah, that's that's got to be that's got to be what it is. Yeah, I'm going to say that it's just it's it's just mainly a reef. That's why we can't see it. Three minutes to go.
You know, I've been thinking something, and that is, I'm actually kind of glad that things are so overloaded right now with me flying the plane, because what it's doing is it's stressing me to the point where I have to figure out um, what my situation is with uh, navigation. And so far, it seems like we've been doing okay. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, the only thing is, you know, we need to figure out better how to trim the plane at this speed. I might take the plane up and just try to get into this configuration and stay in it for a long time and um, during the day and, and see what the options are for, for, you know, as far as trim is concerned with keeping the airplane stable because what we've been doing hasn't been working at all. Alright, looks like we're about 45 minutes from the start of sight, and holy cow, it is empty! It is completely empty! It's literally us and the moon and stars. That's, that's literally it. Oh, I can just... Wow, it is so dark now that I can actually start to see the sun. Um, not the sun, the, uh... Oh, what do you call it? Twilight. No, astronomical twilight. The very beginnings of it are starting now. Alright, 10 seconds to go. And this one we're expecting to be way off. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, starting the shot. Yeah, see, this is how far behind we are. We almost can't see the star. Looks like about right there. This is going to be a huge offset. Holy cow! That's more than two degrees offset. Dang! That's that's going to be probably in the vicinity of 140 nautical miles off. Wow, I actually got that right. Dang. Yeah, see, uh, we're almost so far away that I'm going to have to abandon the talk points because we're losing, we're losing it in the grid. Okay, so we took that shot at 116, and uh, I need the opposite of that, so that's going to be 296, and the offset is 140 nautical miles. So, uh, 296, so that goes to 206. Well, the good thing is, that was a perfect speed star, uh, as far as directions are concerned. I'm going to save that. That's 180 miles long. Uh, talk to speed LOP. Press OK, and drag it up. Okay, so now the second star, Agena, is going to be at 205, and th that was right on time, so let me get that written down. 205 and 42 degrees 10 minutes. So we got, uh, we took our shot at 13.44, and the offset was minus 140. Uh, clear the shot, and begin. This is Agena. And how are we still on track? That is so weird. That, that almost makes me think like my heading indicator is bad, but I know I was snaking all over the place. Um, okay, so the actual time of the shot is going to be 13.47. 
zero offset. That's what I like to see. Uh, all right, so zero offset will be uh, at 205, which means the azimuth will be 295. Sweet, we're within the margin of error of our course still, amazingly enough. Top to course LOP. So now I want to look between, let's get that plotted. There we go. So we're right on course, but we're way behind. So what I want to do now is, oh, geez, come on. Come on. Seriously? Well, while we're here, we might as well get a nice picture. So I need the talk two to talk three. Well, no, we're st we still haven't reached talk two. So that means we're still following talk one, talk two, 102 degrees. So I need to get back to 102 degrees lickety split so that we don't get even further, so that we don't go off to the south now. Because I'd rather be north, of course, than south, of course. There's no islands to the south. So that would be really bad. Let's see if I can turn this off to try to see the horizon now. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Perfect. Shoot, the thing is right in shadow. I can't read it now. Oh, well, it's correct. Dang. So, all right, that means I have to leave the light on now because that shadow is not going to move until the moon does because we're, we can't move from where we are now. It's where we're, where we're supposed to be now. All right, did I get all that written down? Um, I did, amazingly enough. Okay, and I got that plotted. Yes, plotted. Okay. All right. So we're back to square one. Just just hold the heading as well as I can. Oh yeah, I should also do another speed calc here. Um, so let's see. Talk to... to where we were before. We did 118 miles in one in, in a half an hour. It means we we're moving 235 miles per hour. So what I want to know when we get to, to that that island, it's going to be 102 miles from our position which is going to take 25 minutes. Jeez, we're moving so slow. So I'm going to write expecting 10 at 25 minutes from when we took our shot, which would have been 44. So 44 plus 25 is going to be 09, 1409. 1409 is when we should be beam Temetagi and we should come within 20 miles of it, which means it should be almost in front of us now. Too flipping dark. This is 
so outlandishly wild. There's like literally no weather. All this time, we're finally getting nothing. Alright, so how much time do I have left until my LFB intersects? Or how much distance, I should say. Dang, 392 miles from 44, so 392 miles means it's going to take an hour and 40 minutes from, from 44, so, um, what do we say, uh, 1344, so an hour and 40 minutes will take you to 1524. What's going on at 1524? Consulting my landfall chart, 1524, ah, oh, the sun is up. So we're, we're probably, well, we're at 30,000 feet. If we pick a bright star, what star are we using? Atria? Yeah, we, sh we should, we should be able to see, Atria's, Atria's a big, Atria's a big girl. Uh, 1.9, yeah, I, I think, I think we can see it just, just barely. We'll get there just in time for the sun rising. Now, if it's clear, we might be able to see Totegegi from LOP intercepts, if it stays this clear. We'll have to see. All right, we're turning again. Uh, yep, so we keep the moon on the... Uh, right side, so we want to enter a left bank here to correct. This is a kind of really poor um, uh, roll and pitch indicator. There's not like a center bubble, so it's kind of hard to tell how, how banked you are, although I guess the turn, the turn and slip indicator theoretically could do it as well. Alright, can we turn off now? Yeah. Yeah, now I, now I can see astronomical twilight again. And there's my horizon reference too. Ah, dang. Yeah, I should have known. This is going to go back into shadow again. So maybe instead of keeping an eye on my attitude indicator, I should keep an eye on my turn and slip. Because now I see us going, yeah, we're going a little bit to the right. So I want to correct a little bit to the left now. Yep, and we're going back left again. Okay, so that's probably what it is. is I need to look at the turn and slip. All right, now I need to plan for a talk. Two hours, 30 minutes. So advancing to 1414, let's see, um, we traveled, cross your fingers for the weather update, 117 miles, so I'm expecting us to travel an additional 117 miles. Dang, we're still not going to make talk to even by, by and a half hours. So. The object is going to be actually. I don't know what that is going to be. I need. I need. Um, I need a fixed location. Uh, negative twenty-one degrees fifteen minutes south, and negative one hundred and forty um, degrees fourteen minutes. that into uh, Skyview Cafe. So 2115 south and 140 degrees 14 minutes. 
Oh my gosh, we're coming out of the 140s and going to the 130s. If we were in the northern hemisphere, we'd be getting close to California now. That's how far east we are. Alright, so we're still heading on the exact same coordinates, so we still want something that is about 114 degrees. And 114 degrees is going to be... like 2... 294. I think formal hot is probably the best the best thing. It's it's just below one hour from the horizon, but I think we'll be okay. And it is at uh, two hundred ninety six degrees. Whoops, minus so it's one one eight uh, one sixteen. Wait, 296. Yeah, 116. And then the altitude is going to be 13 degrees, 36 minutes. It's a magnitude 1 star, so I think we'll be okay. Um, although I think the brighter it is, the worse that effect gets, so maybe not. I don't, I don't think it'll... Yeah, it shouldn't matter, because that's our speed star. We know speed is going to be way off anyway. Uh, and then, let's see, I need to add 90 degrees, so 296. Uh, will take us to 386 for uh, 20, 26 degrees. Uh, Agena again. So I'm going to do Agena uh, 27, so that's 20208 degrees and 38 degrees 51 minutes. Twenty one fifteen south. One forty fourteen west. And this is actually gonna be closer to us than uh talk to which is insane, but that's how it goes. I, I, I haven't tested this before, so um, either the, the wind is really bad or my uh, my speed estimate was, was very wrong, and I'm going to have to guess the latter because we, we have to prepare for a longer trip. Hundred sixteen, uh, one hundred and sixteen degrees. Thirteen degrees, thirty six minutes. All right, so thirteen degrees, thirty six minutes, uh, one hundred and sixteen degrees. 21 degrees, 15 minutes south, 140 degrees, 15 minutes west. We're good, 14.01, so we have 13 minutes to go, and let me just confirm that I have stars down here. Um, let's see, zero for the offset. Yep, and I've got them plotted in Google Earth, so we're good. Okay, clear the shot, clear star one, star two. And from now on, I just need to figure out how to keep myself facing the right direction. 
one solitary... Okay, there's there's a couple clouds. Jeez! It is so flipping clear out here. But I guess that makes sense, you know, the whole Eastern Pacific thing going on. Alright, we're at 21.15... Oh, wait a minute. When, when did I say 25 minutes after after 44, so that's 04, 09. So we're si we're still six minutes from uh, hitting the uh, the island, which is uh, 24 miles. So it's going to be uh, that's not very far. That should be like down here. 20, 24 and uh, 24 off. So it should be like right about here. There should be an atoll down here. Um, Tenetagi. Oh yeah, I wrote it down. 1409. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've had a positive fix, so it would be really nice to see Tenetagi. Because that, that really tells me that my celestial navigation is not bonkers. Can't see it. It's more important to uh, keep myself on track, though. Well, at least that makes up for being off so 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 long now. But um, let's see. That might explain why I couldn't see it earlier. All right, are you gonna show up now? Actually, I need to see my heading indicator. Oh well, yeah, it looks like. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay, so the shadow has passed now. We can we can turn the light on again. I'm gonna guess Tematagi is probably around those clouds. Usually clouds like to cluster around um, islands because they're a disruption in the uh, in the temperature and, and laminar airflow. So I'm going to guess that that clustering of clouds probably marks where Tematag is. When, when the sky is this empty, um, I, I think that's a safe assumption. But we are, of course, assuming it's not, it's not a guaranteed fix. And it seems, we seem to be coming up to it just at about the right pace for it to be Tematagi. I think I'm seeing maybe lighter blue over here. It's kind of really hard to tell. Two minutes to go, and 
and then it should be directly beam us. And then we're going to pass directly over another atoll, and this one isn't even labeled in Google Earth. Holy cow. Uh, it's got a runway, though, so it definitely has a name. to go and I really want to get my heading correct so that I can uh, oh you know what it's it's not going to be my heading it's going to be my track I don't think it should make that much of a difference though Okay, so it's basically now, and it's going to be 90 degrees off like this. Oh, oh, that's, uh, I thought those were stars, but they look like they are below the horizon. is that? It's vanishing as I zoom in. So the other option is that we've drifted way south and then it's up here somewhere. But it doesn't look like it's there either. Yeah, it's just ridiculously dark. We need to start preparing for the next shot. 2115, 140, 15, 116 degrees, 13 degrees, 35 minutes. two minutes to go. Oh, we're about to lose the moon. So, 
Yeah, now it is going to get a little bit darker, but just a little bit. And then uh, it should start to get brighter again. What the heck is this thing? Weird. It's like when I zoom in, it disappears. All right. Well, since since I can't resolve it, um, let's see. There there's something to the northeast and something to the southwest. So maybe there are some cities down there. And then I'll look it up and tell you guys what what I'm looking at. Um, actually, this... Oh, no, it's Tenetet, of course. Uh, no, this one looks totally uninhabited. So I'm going to say that's bonkers, what I'm seeing there. All right, 20 seconds to the shot. And this is the one that I'm hoping is dead on, because this this is where I think I am, not, not where I should be, time-wise at least. Oh my gosh, I forgot to copy this in here again. Five, four, three, two, one, starting the shot. Okay, good. just a bit maybe um, yeah we've got it so it looks like a five mile offset not bad at all uh, actual time of the shot was at 14 14 and let's see this is going to be down again so it's negative oh come on we're going even slower now oh my gosh so it should, it should be minus five. Yeah, minus five, okay. So not 116, two, nine or six. Back five nautical miles. to 06. Save to our 30 minute fix speed LOP. Uh, and check and make sure that I have minus five down. Yes, I do. Okay, so plot the star, clear the shot. And over here, we're gonna do a Gina. That is going to be at 208 degrees. Thirty-eight degrees, fifty-one minutes. It's like 20. We're, we've drifted south. Um, that means we should be... Oh my gosh, we almost overflew Tematagi. That was down at... Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that means we basically overflew Tematagi. Well, the moon should be directly behind us now, so that means that it should be lit up pretty well. So as soon as I finish this thing, I'm going to turn around. Uh, actual time of the shot is going to be 14 by 2 seconds, 16. 
and it's positive 20. So that means we've drifted south. Uh, real quick, star name Agena, 208 degrees, 38 degrees, 50 minutes. Okay. And yeah, that's plotted. And then on Google Earth, I went to plot this up and see. Oh, something is interrupting the moonbeam here. Oh no, wait a minute. That's no, that's not my boom. That that's got to yeah, that's an island. Okay. Um screw plotting this right now. Actually, no, I need to plot it. Um so Real quick, in the direction of travel, 208, 208, or 30, 20 miles, 208, 30, uh, 208, 20 miles, okay, and then I'm going to turn it, so it's going to go to 29 or 8, yep, 29 or 8, and drag it back, 29 or 8, 2, 8, 2, 8. yeah, we almost over... We practically directly are put two hour thirty minute fix course LOP. So that means there is a wild um, turn going on here and it's gone. So wow, I can't I can't believe we caught that. It went right through the moonbeam. If it if it weren't for that moonbeam, we would have missed it. I am so happy that I saw that, because that is clever, clever, clever. I cannot see it anymore. Not in the slightest. Wow, that, that's, that's cool. That's opportunism at its finest right there. And we're basically at top two right now. So, uh, let's see, that was two minutes ago, right? So, two minutes ago, sighted Tematagi at 14.18. Um, rear right, so that's, uh, say, 5 o'clock. It's about 5 o'clock that we saw it. So if we saw it at 5 o'clock, that means that our position would have been, um, let's see, we're about 120, what just happened? Well, I guess whatever the moon, the moon must, illumination must have just abruptly turned off, which is kind of dumb, but I guess it's a sim limitation. Okay, so uh, we're at 120 degrees, so if we saw it at 5 o'clock, we would have to be due east, and that is exactly where the celestial site... Wait, no. No, I'm confusing... Oh my gosh. I'm confusing that with my previous celestial site because they're now dragged out, they're crisscrossing each other in multiple locations. So that's not where I thought it was, but I'm pretty sure I saw it. Uh, next up, there will be another... Oh, yeah, let's let's get the name of that island there. What's that place?
see. This guy is at 2214 South, 13844. Uh, you are. Oh, there's there is a runway there. Are you kidding me? No, no label in Open Street Maps. Uh, ESRI World Topo. Again, no label. Uh, let's see. Of course, night lights is not help us. USGS Topo doesn't show up. WOC street map doesn't work either. Is this legitimately unnamed? There's no way that this thing isn't named. I'll go to Sky Vector and see what Sky Vector says. There's a runway. Let's try this again. 2214, 138, 40. 2214, so it's far south. Okay, here we go. Zooming in on this object. What? No name. Are you kidding me? All right, I'm going to turn all the places on in Google now. If this island has a name, we're going to figure it out. Okay, what is this? Fangatu... Fangataufa. Fangataufa is its name. A small, low, narrow coral atoll in the eastern side of the Tumotu Archipelago, along with its neighboring atoll, uh, Monarova. It has been the site of approximately 200 nuclear bomb tests. Okay, so... Whatever I do, don't land there. Well, there we go. Um, let's see, how many minutes after were we expecting it? So, eight, it's 80 miles later. And we'll cover 80 miles in 20 minutes. And we took the site at 14, so 34 is when we're going to pass it. And we should be passing literally directly over it. But unless it gets brighter, we're not going to see it. I knew where... Um, I knew where Tamatagi was, and I still couldn't see it, even where I was looking where it was moments ago. So at this point, I think it's give up until... Uh, what is that? Oh, man, it's, it's the sun doing this dumb thing again. Stupid solar reflection. Oh, yeah, I should calculate my uh, my new true ground speed here. Also, I'm drifting south, so I, I seriously need to arrest that right now. We traveled 157 miles in 30 minutes. What? Is that right? If that's true, that means the wind has done a 24-7. Or, sorry, a 180, a U-turn. So I was expecting a true airspeed of 277, and later a 350... Come on. Come on, Dr. Aeronautics. Look at your own nav log, for goodness sake. I was expecting a, a delta to switch of about um, 40 miles per hour. That may have been what we just saw. So we covered 157 miles in... 
30 minutes. That means our speed has... Um, yeah, that means our speed has shot up to 312 miles per hour. I better not be wrong about that because that that's important. Uh, why did I expect us to go this far? these things out of temporary locations either. So I guess what I should do is look speed line to speed line. That will, t that will tell me what it is. And confirm in my chart here. So this is, this is why I do a celestial log. So talk two is done at 44 and talk two and a half hours was done at 14. So it's exactly half an hour apart. So we know our time. Now we just need our distance. So let's see, I've selected talk to speed, and this is talk two hours 30 minutes speed. Connect the two lines. Maybe that's why I'm suddenly doing on track now. Connect the two lines, it's 156 miles. Holy cow. We just shot up in speed like crazy. I'm glad I know this. So let's see. We went from we went from 260 to 312. That's a that's a wind magnitude change of, of um, 52 knots. That's that's not too crazy, but it's the speed at which it happened is crazy. Although I guess we're loading things in. 313 miles per hour is what I think we're doing right now. Dang, that's fast. Okay. Uh, in that case. Uh, 313 miles an hour will put us in half an hour 157 miles on. We'll be darn close to beginning a descent. And at 80 miles, that would have taken 15 minutes. So 15 minutes after the shot, 20... Oh, man. We're, we should be right over that nuclear island right now. But I forgot. We're not going to be able to see it. At least I don't think see it. Should be right over the nuclear island. That's so cool, the phone moon is setting. Well, unless it happens to pass right through that reflection beam, uh, we're not going to see it. Unless, what is that? Uh, probably just clouds. Yeah, you're going to de detect motion before you're going to detect something that's still. So I figure if I just circle around and it doesn't show up now, that means I'm not going to see it. I give up. Well, moon set, everybody. It's going to get really dark. But that's okay, because the sun's going to be coming out soon. I'm not going to try to do a corrective analysis um, so far, at least based on what's going on. But I do want to try to investigate what I can do to kind of avoid this situation because it's really frustrating to, uh, you know, not be able to control the plane properly. Like, I feel like we're good now, but it took forever to get to this point. And I, I really, I really need to get back to where, to where I should be because we're going to be, we're going to be too far south because we've been drifting. 
Okay, so I said we're going to be about 157 miles further along. So, let's see. I think that means that we're going to be... Uh, wait, talk to... Oh my gosh. Say hello to talk three. Making an unexpected cameo. 22 degrees, 51 minutes south. And 137 degrees. Wow, we're in we're in like the if you know the Alaska Inside Passage, that's about what latitude or what longitude we're at now. So if, if we were in the North Pacific, we would be getting really close to land. 137 degrees, 42 minutes west. And so advancing the time here. 14, 24, 34, 44, 22 degrees, 50, one minute south, 137 degrees, 42 minutes. So let's see, we are definitely past talk to now, so in distance. So going back to the flight plan, that means we should be at about, yeah, the wind shift caused that, 105 degrees. So we're actually, yeah, considering that we drifted south, I think we're good right here, just to leave it alone. I don't want to go too far north, though, and definitely not if it drifts back south again. Uh, okay, so 105. Oh no, but that's that's our that's our heading. 115. So this is going to be two, 295 on Skyview Cafe. I need something that shows us at about 295. Uh, formal hot again. And it's really formal hot, but. I keep saying formal hot all the time. I used to since I was a kid. 114 degrees. 22 degrees, 17 minutes. So no worries about diffraction now. And then, uh, let's see, we're going to add 90 to that. So it's showing up at 294. Fourteen. So I need something that is at 194 degrees or 14 degrees for Skyview Cafe. Okay, We can do Shaula. A hundred and ninety four degrees, seventy four degrees, uh, nine minutes. Okay, and I see we're getting on a little bit more with uh, Dawn here. So, let's see, um, I need to copy this information in my secondary chart here. So, Fomal Hot, azimuth of 114 degrees, 22 degrees, 17 minutes, 
and then Shaula. 194 degrees. You know what? That's that's 80 degrees off. I really should see if I can get something further up along that shot. 24 degrees. Let's do Rigel Cantaris. Two hundred seven degrees, thirty eight degrees, forty one minutes. I got my nine, ninety, add ninety math wrong. Rigel Cantaris, uh, hundred and ninety four degrees, thirty eight degrees, forty one minutes. Twenty two degrees south, fifty one minutes, and a hundred and thirty seven degrees, forty two minutes, azimuth, a hundred and fourteen degrees, Assumes, uh, no, I'm reading that column wrong. I need to add a column break here so that I know to not to read straight up. Twenty two degrees seventeen minutes. So let me make sure I have everything. Um, offset positive 20, and we've got stars 1 and 2 plotted. Yes. Okay, so clear the shot. And clear star 1, star 2, and we got just about 3 minutes to go. And I need to do a fuel hack right now. So it's 1440. We got into um, talk. This is talk three, right? 14, four, yeah. We've been up for three hours. So that's burned 180 gallons. That's 192, yeah. We, sh we should be good. Um, at, when, we, when we've burned 330 gallons, that's when we switch over, or when we need to switch over to the main tanks to avoid running a tank dry. So we're still a long way from that, hopefully. going to be really hard to read the fuel gauges initially. Alright, uh, let's see how long we got to go. And a half minutes. And right about now, assuming that my shot shows us where I believe we are, we're coming into the Totagegi LOS zone, which means that we might be able to sight land at this point. And hopefully our speed continues, because if it does, then it means we might actually make LOP intercept on time. In fact, Man, if we've drifted, if we've drifted too far south, we may be past LFB intercept, and that's a dangerous place to be in. And 
afterwards we should also be over some sort of loopy, another atoll. I don't know its name, but I, uh, I don't think I have enough time to look it up right now. I'll look it up in a minute. Shoot, yeah, as soon as I did my two two hours, 30 minutes, I should have switched over to LOP intercept. Crap. I may have just shot myself in the foot, which I was hoping I didn't do this time around. Hopefully we're further north of where I, where I think we are, because if we're not, we may have blown the LOP intercept, because it has a shallow angle. 15 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one, starting the shot. Uh oh. What's wrong? Taking at fourteen forty four, twenty one fifty one south, twenty two fifty one. Oh my gosh, that's the problem. I got my longitude or my latitude wrong. Let's try that again. No? Twenty-one fifty, right? Nope, twenty-two fifty. So my times are all right. My times are are wrong. So this this shot this shot is completely screwed up. Uh, we need to get LOP intercept in now. So Totegegi is at 23.05 and uh, 134 degrees and what is this? 50, 53 minutes. So we're not going to we're not going to do the shot that I was talking about. Just going to my landfall chart. It's 14.44. So I need to pick something that's halfway between here. Um, that's going to be 40, 43 degrees is what we believe the azimuth to be. Um, 43 degrees, and the elevation is going to... 43 degrees is the elevation. 43.625. 43.625 is going to be... Uh, point, point six two. So that's 35. And then the azimuth is going to be 100, 189 degrees. So we're actually shooting a southern star, which is the first, first time I'm doing that, and we're not in a good position right now. Well, look at that. We are five miles. Okay, let me think about this real quick. We are five miles lower. Five miles lower means that we are. I think that means we're to the north. Five, yeah, five nautical miles lower than Totegegi, and we're looking in a southerly direction. Yeah, it means we're still we're still north. Okay, so whew, just in time. I'm glad I didn't complete that first shot there. Um, so five, five miles and... I wish I knew what, what went wrong. I guess I'll have to watch and, and see what I, what I messed up on that last shot. But this one makes sense, minus five. So that, that's where we are relative to uh, the intercept. Wait a minute. Minus five. It's a southern star. Minus five should be on... Should be on... Wait, no. That's where the base is. The blue line is where we are. The blue line is us. Yeah, 
Yeah, so actually there's there's hardly any turn here because of the direction that we're that we're flying right now. So alright, I'm gonna take the time down right now. 1448. And let me see how how the time compares here. We're about 13 minutes late. That's actually not that bad. Turned onto LOPI, which is going to be 189 minus 90, um, which is 99 degrees, but that's true. So I have to subtract our magnetic heading, which is our magnetic heading uh, or, or um, magnetic variation, 14 degrees. So that leaves us a compass heading of 85 degrees. And yeah, as, as I said, we just kind of happened to turn just given our bad airmanship of the plane. So as long as we keep heading this direction, we're right where we should be. So real quick, let's see if we can take that, that course star, Rigel Cantaurus. Because I still don't have a true fix on where we are. Rigel Cantaurus is going to be at... Um, actually, no. When, once you take the LOP star, you have to change the... Um, you have to change the assumed latitude and longitude again. But that's going to show where the base is. Yeah, we, we can we can do that because because we just we'd have to. All right, let me let me. All right, I'm gonna move this on Skyview Company. Twenty three zero five. for the latitude and one thirty four fifty three for the longitude and the current time is. 49 to 50, so we'll say 51, and just, just a quick check of our course here. Um, or actually, no, I wanted a speed star. Let's do Saturn. 51 degrees. Fifty one degrees. Uh, fifty eight minutes. I'm just gonna round up. And then the azimuth is going to be exactly ninety degrees. Wait a second. No, we were going to use the Star of Atria. Never mind. Yep, everything is still good. Uh, 90 degrees. And let me take that uh, shot down. Forty-four LOPI was uh, minus five. All right, so I've got that. Let's clear that and uh, uh oh. Oh no no no! This this is right. This this is correct. This is this is the speed star. And I've done it from Totegegi. So this should this should tell us how far from the island of Totegegi we are. Okay, we're we're good, we're good. Scare me for a second. Alright, so I'm gonna do my offset here, so 199. I'm gonna go off five miles.
So this is LOP shot, which I'm saving now. So it looks like we're still about 190 miles. So we're, we've intercepted the LOP early. Wow, just barely on it. Yeah, I think we're gonna need to continue to navigate here. Let's see, does this agree with my, sort of, 150, but you know, as long as I maintain this track, we should be good. Wow, super clear. That's good. We should be we should have maximum potential to sight islands. Uh, let's see. So that oval island was uh, moraine, apparently, and that should be to the southwest. Wow, this is the clearest it's been by far. You you can really see the curvature of the Earth here. It's insane. Um, let's see. Maybe we're looking at Maria. Up that way. This is just about the time frame that, that I really wanted. Um, so, let me get that plotted, though. So, 14, 15, oh, of course it agrees, because I didn't extend the track all the way. Duh. I think I see 190 miles. So, 190 nautical miles. at um, 90, so it's two, 270. And then 360 is our line of position. So we must have slowed down and just passed over the nuclear island. So LOP, whoops, drifting, that's dangerous. At this stage, that's very dangerous. LOP I speed shot is what we've got here. Let's see, the next, the next time we want to um, do the shot is when I have a direct row here, which is 1450, oh, it's 55 now. All right, um, as soon as position doesn't change, the azimuth is now 190. And I'm forecasting 42.15. Okay, got that recorded, so I'm going to clear here and give it the shot here. All right, so we're still we're still basically maintaining the line of position. That's what I wanted to see. So we are still heading straight on that line to intersect the base. So we're good there. Let's see if I extend the LOP shot. So 1457, second LOP shot.
offset minus five nautical miles. So I think we might actually want to drift a little bit to the right, believe it or not. Um, although I don't think five nautical miles is going to make that much of a difference, to be honest. We'll put this in a star three. Yeah, so we're, we're still maintaining the line of position. We are slightly west of Totegegi. And we are... Per the speed shot that we made, we're actually not in LOP. Well, we're just now coming into LOP range right about now. LOP range. Sight range. LOS range. Something is down there. Oh no, that's just the stupid reflection. Okay, two islands, definitely. And I make sense of that. One of those, oh, I might be a little bit off of where I think I am. Might be more, more Roa, and the other one, Fangatalfa. And then I see like a shallow area over here. Oh well, yeah, that might be a reef. Nope, that's too deep for a seamount. Probably a cloud reflection. I'll write that down in the log. Um, this is going to be 7 o'clock. So at 1500, spotted. Um, let's see. More Roa. And. Banga Taufa, seven o'clock. And it looks like we're we're straight in front of Banga Taufa. Yes, that that agrees. That agrees. And then there's a sea mount which we're going to pass over right now. Um. So. drift. It's bad. That's We'll consider that our five nautical miles that just got taken out. Okay, now here's the real question. What's the sun's azimuth when it comes up? Um, dang close to 90 degrees. So, what does that mean? We're following a LOPI of 85 degrees. So, we should be facing but not traveling towards the sun. Perfect. Well, I need to figure out how to do this on the Robinson Crusoe leg. That's easy. Just point the nose at the sun. That's that's the easiest thing I could possibly do. So, 190 nautical miles. Let me let me get the the time differential here. In 30 minutes we traveled 111 miles. Which means we're down, now down to 220 miles an hour. Jeez. 30 minutes, uh, yeah, 220 miles an hour. And let's see, I need to travel 220 miles. So we'll be on this course for about an hour. LOP intercept was at uh, 1500. Yeah, 1448. So, all right, expecting. To Gegi at 1548. And I was going to say, if, if we get clouds, we're, we're, in, we're in deep trouble. 
because I'm going to lose the ability to to navigate based on the um, based on the stars. Well, I guess we could use a solar LOP intercept, but then there'd be no no way to tell once once we pass the island. So something something went screwy here with my wind calculations. We're, we were going way slower than anticipated. Next check we can make, uh, I grab my chart here. This is going to be at uh, 05. Let's do that really quickly. So 05 is going to be a altitude of forty one. Point eight and an azimuth of a hundred and ninety one degrees. Thirty minutes will or thirty seconds will we'll take another another shot here. So the real question is, how long do I have before I get into LOP range? Um, let's see, it was 40 miles. 40 miles at our current speed will take 11 minutes. And that was done from our offset that we made a couple minutes ago. Which would have been at 55. So in 10, 10 minutes, 40 miles, yeah. Right about now, we should start to see Totegegi. All right, it's time. Still good. Just take an eye on, on my fuel gauges here and make sure that no funny business is going on. I think everything's good. All right, so zero offset. Um, we'll reuse star one here. So now you can see we've, we've basically coincided with um, with the position. So let's see, 99, and now it's uh, 101. So we'll just yoink this by one degree. So now it should be dead ahead. There should be an island to the south. About 30 miles out. And 
it is an atoll, so it might be might be really small and hard to see. But I can still see our islands back there. So so something something that doesn't make sense. So it's 108, so it should be one quarter the distance. So the the atoll would have to be hiding in one of those clouds in order for it to work. Let's see if we can do another um, distance star here. So now the time, we'll say it's going to be 15.15. And right about then the sun's going to be coming up, so it's, that's pretty much our last shot, probably, for the stars. Um, let's see, I want a speed star. Well, no, Ju Jupiter will stay visible for a long time. Jupiter is actually a really good position right now. Um, 87 degrees. 46 degrees, 10 minutes. I think I have something. Okay, so 1510. Potentially, Mangareva Atoll, which includes Totegegi. And it's exactly where I would expect to see it if we were five nautical miles off. Um, I'll say 12 o'clock on right. 1548. Uh, I think we're going to get to it earlier than that, actually. That's really far out, though. That might be 100 miles out. So if we can just solve the mystery of why I can't see that atoll, I'll be a lot happier. I haven't seen a weather update in a very long time, so at this point, if I don't have, or if I still have an inter internet connection, I'm going to assume at this point the simulator can't load new weather. Oh my God! The freaking moon is shining through the ocean. Now that's a scary sight. An undersea moon. All right, I need to keep an eye on on that island should it disappear into clouds. So it really does look like Totegegi, um, or I should say Mangareva. So there's an island close to us, which is going to be Tavari, and then a big one is Mangareva, and then out to the left is Totegegi, and then behind it is another guy, um, Alkina. And I'm seeing all four, so... And given that it's directly in front of us, and I say that we're still on the um, correct line of position, I'm going to basically declare at this point we've made landfall. So all I need to do now is figure out when we've hit beginning of descent. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're still too far. Which is good. This is the first time I've actually spotted it before it was time to descend. I, I have spotted it after or at LOP intercept, but that's before I've started the descent. So this is, this is good. So 
So I need two two more minutes, and then I can get Jupiter. Let me do one more fuel hack. So we got up at um, 11.44, and we're coming up on 15.44. So let, let's just say it's going to be four hours. At 60 gallons per hour, well, 59 gallons per hour, four hours, will consume 235 gallons. Yeah, that's still nowhere near the bay tank's capacity. So either we're way good or our math is way wrong. I shouldn't say our math, our, you know, anticipation on how the model works is, is way wrong. One minute to go, and we'll we'll reuse star two for this one. Time to go. five miles to go yeah so not quite time to descend yet but we're getting closer as you can see there so that's that's our new position where the green intersects blue and red um, but what I can do at this point is calculate when to start descend so all right let me get this plotted first So this was at 15.15, 105 nautical miles off of um, 273. Which is going to be over 3. save this one. This is um, LOP second speed shot. And I'll put the time down. 15.15. So I'm actually passing through L original LOPI intercept. We had a very early uh, LOP intercept. We're actually passing through LOP intercept right now. And beginning of descent will be in uh, nine miles. And 
then at our current speed, which is 220 miles an hour, it'll take two and a half minutes to cover nine miles. So it's basically time to descend right now. And correct my heading. Yep, that's it. So, so yeah, um, the island off to the left, that's uh, Taravai, and then the middle one is Mangareva, and then the strip, you can barely see it, that's Totegegi. And then the one behind it, behind all those islands, Alkina, and there's actually another one way off to the right, uh, and that is Akamaru. Okay, uh, writing the current time down, 15, 18, beginning, descent. And you know, I talked about trying to fix things earlier. I, I, don't, I don't think it's an issue anymore. Uh, and here's why. I did, I did catch it early, and I said we would abort flight. I checked the winds. That's all I can do. If the winds aren't doing what, what you're supposed, what you think, there's just no way to tell because you know it's the 1940s. I would have just aborted the flight, and that's just how it works. Okay, going to descent checklist. Throttles, 15 inches of manifold pressure. Propeller governors, 1600 RPM. And that's it until we reach below 12,000 feet. Yeah, take a look at that drift. We can actually see the waves now. That's pretty real. Okay, I can see the Pacific now directly underneath. Yeah, that's quite a lot of drift. That's what it is. We got some really high speed winds. I don't know how, but the... Um, the... Uh, make a drift correction here. I'm also going to add a little bit of power. I think we're descending a bit too quickly. I don't know how uh, it was done, but uh, somehow the winds got into the simulator. So that's realistic. I just don't know how it did it. Uh, so, let's see, we're 102 miles away, so that's roughly half an hour. So, if we're not up there and or down there, I should say, in half an hour from when I took the last site, which is 1515, so 1545, we're still on for speed. Yeah, if we're not down there by 1545, 48, I'm going to be getting concerned. But as of now, it's it's in sight out the window. Now, what would I do if it were cloudy? Well, what I would do is I would get a solar LOP intercept. So what I would do is I would say, okay, what angle is the sun from the island? And if I did that, you can see we're almost at the same angle. We're flying almost straight for the sun. So. What I would do is find out that the sun angle line is really over there, and then take a take an S turn to the right and then to the left, and still be flying in. Now, now the catch is, 
there's no speed shot potential for me at this point. Um, actually, wait a minute. No, if I took an LOP off the sun, I would have to go past the island. So I would have to continue till I'm at the island. Yeah, that would be really risky. Yeah, let's really hope that um, no stars left. So celestial navigation, we can cross that off. We're done. Unless we use the sun. Now, I guess for, for Easter Island, I'm probably also going to have the moon up here. And then between the sun and the moon, I could, I'm could, i going to bet that I could probably figure out in an emergency my position using sun and moon. Because it'll be 90 degrees apart. So it might not be ideal. You know, might have 20 degrees to work with. But I think that's enough to nail down our position if it's an absolute emergency. But this is kind of what it's going to look like coming into Easter Island. You know, in, except for the fact that like I said, no islands. Not even trying. I think I do see some extra islands up there. That might be Maria. And yes, I recognize that I said it said that an hour ago. And that might be Maratia. But yeah, guys, we're coming into Totegegi. So if the uh, if there was some nice background, smooth jazz, you know, this this would be where you can't hear it anymore and we turn that final click turning the music off this is where it gets serious and that music is replaced with just the sound of cold wind Let's see, which, which runway am I supposed to go for today? According to my weather notes, it looks like 3-0. So we, so we want to pass the airport. What we're going to do is we're, we're going to pass the atoll on the, um, on the south side. And then we're gonna, basically going to follow the outer edge of the atoll all the way around. And that's our traffic pattern. The pattern is literally the atoll. That will take us around. Let me see what what did our trim end up being. Um, looks like it is slightly to the left. So that's kind of annoying. It, it works backwards than what you would expect. Let me figure out which which tank is fuller. So we are. Let's let's assume that we burned four hours worth of fuel. So that's going to be 240 gallons. Uh, two yeah, 240 gallons, which out of each one is uh, 120 gallons. So there's probably one third left in the um, six six just about. Uh, yeah, one third left, 40 gallons. So we will actually switch over to our mains, which should be fuller tanks when we get down to our uh, landing checklist. Uh-oh. Cumulus cloud just popped up there.
Dang, we're still above 20,000 feet. It's hard to believe. So at this point, I can definitely say that the main tanks really haven't come down at all. So I think we are um, probably a lot better off in this plane than what the POH says, which you know doesn't make sense because you know you're supposed to get the fuel burn that the POH says, and we're getting like a tenth of it, and or sorry, six tenths of it. So if that's the case, then that theoretically means that I could fly from Japan to California via Hawaii. Um, because apparently this plane seems to be demonstrating that it has the range for it. Eighteen minutes, yeah, I think that's about right. See now if if the visibility were, were way down, we would probably still not see it, which is I think that's unrealistic. I mean, when I'm sitting in an airliner, I, I would say what we're seeing now is probably pretty realistic. So it's like really hard to see stuff that's way in the distance, but when it gets below like four degrees from the horizontal, yeah, you can see. Let's preview real quick the um, speed 5 power settings just to hear what that sounds like if we have to if we do end up flying with that so that is a rpm of 1900 and a um, manifold pressure of 27 inches Wow, so this is five, the speed profile of five. All right, we'll go back down to cruise here, or descent rather. And I see that because we've trimmed up so so much that we're actually going really slow. So I think that's delaying our descent some.
All right. Um, so let's let's try this one more time, just because it may not have been clear um, which island is which. So um, the island that's closest to us is Taravai. Now the biggest one that kind of looks like a, a weird cone-shaped thing, that's Mangareva. Now beyond Mangareva to the left, there should be a very long and straight island. That's Totegegi. And then um, to the right, uh, kind of angled, um, so, so it's almost at a right angle to Totegegi, um, is, uh, it looks like that island's unnamed. And then way off to the um, to the right side, that is uh, Akamaru. Ah, there we go, Alkina. It's just only showing up on Wikipedia. Alkina is the, the, the one that's uh, east of Mangareva and looks like uh, looks like it's at a right angle to Totegegi. All right, let's see what the closest continent is. And for the purposes of this, I am count, gonna count New Zealand as a continent. Um, wow, it is still New Zealand. 2,908 miles away. Now, if we don't count New Zealand, and I go a little bit further, it is South America. South America and North America are, weirdly enough, yeah, North America is actually closer, specifically Mexico, is closer to where we are now than Australia. That's that's how far we are. And yet not as close, at, or um, is still closer than our destination, South America. It's insane. Well, this is just about perfect weather right here. Couldn't ask for anything better. And, and it's nice daytime, so you can actually see more of the ocean, as opposed to it just be some dark, depressing, endless night. I'm amazed at how we're, we're still drifting, and we're, we're pretty low now. Um, we're at 13,000 feet. Let's check our time. That still might be accurate for 48. I don't know why it seems so long, the descent. It's probably because I'm not panicking and being like, where is it, where is it, where is it? I've had my nose on it for like the past half hour. And you know what I just realized is, I think this is this is the first time we're, we're, we're getting a, a really small island um, let's see how far, how big across this is. Yeah, yeah, only eight miles in radius, and it was exactly where we said it would be the whole time. So as long as I did what I said I was going to do for Easter Island and abandon abandon the trip, if if it's if if it's clear that it's not going to happen on time before the sun rises, uh, then. This is a perfect run, and my confidence is at an all-time high, which is extremely important because 
even worse than leg nine is leg ten. Leg ten is really scary. Although, depending on how much fuel we've burned, I might say, eh, leg ten. It's going to be exhaustive, but not scary from a fuel perspective. I mean, talk about it being anticlimactic if I could just make it from Easter Island all the way to South America, which I won't do, because I've said I'm going to do Robinson Crusoe. And by jolly, I'm going to do that. It's just that instead of, instead of it being a um, running on fumes situation, it's just going to be like, okay, there it is, and now we're only 300 miles from South America. Okay, we're at 11.5, so I can continue the checklist now. Fuel boost pumps off below 12,000 feet. One, two. Um, O2 flow off below 12,000 feet. And let's see what our nav log is saying. Temperature outside should be plus two, so cockpit heat can go off. We'll be in the tropical air pretty soon. Alright, so I think now I'll move into my landing checklist. So we'll go full se fuel selectors to fullest tanks. So 15... You know what? Yeah, 15.43. Four hours exactly on drop tanks. We're going from drop tanks to main. Six, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Done. Uh, fuel boost pumps on. We'll do that when we're a little bit lower, when we uh, pretty much pass over the western. Um, periphery of the atoll. I guess the, the reef is what you would call it. The western reef. Actually, we're getting really close to going over it right now. So, on, on the, very, the very far side, that, that strip of land, that's Totegeg. Now, I'm a little bit upset that I can't see more of the reef here. Um, it's like Flight Simulator doesn't even trace the outer edge of the reef, which is kind of ridiculous. And the water depth where I am now should be right around... Uh, actually, there should be a shore break, actually, right around here. So, like, you could literally surf what's directly under us right now. Alright, I think I will put the fuel boost pumps back on now, as ironic as that seems. Uh, prop governors... Still not ready for that. We need to lose more altitude. Alright, is it 48 yet? Three minutes to go. Wow. So that, that estimation was bang on. By 48, we should be right over Mangareva if we didn't do our little um, switcheroo here and go over the uh, south side. And the airport is going to be towards the south side of Totegate. So I definitely want to overshoot.
so let's see. We were expecting originally from the navlog that we were going to get here uh, at 1454, and it is 15, almost 1554. So one hour off, um, and that's pretty close to our maximum permissible. One hour is the is the range that I that I give us, plus or minus one hour for arrival. So. Um, I don't know if that means we would have made Easter Island or not. I guess if it was clear, we would have, but if not, then yeah, so. Anyway, let's continue with the landing checklist. So we're gonna bring the throttle up to 2600 RPM. Make sure control auto rich. Intercooler shutters open. Speed established 175 miles per hour. Oh yeah, and I also should open up these other guys too. So we want the oil cooler flaps and automatic, and the coolant overrides back off again. And we're actually doing 150 right now, so. Uh, let's see, speed established 175, landing light as desired. It's late enough in the day, I'm actually not going to turn it back on. Uh, landing gear, I'll turn the, turn the navigation lights off too. Uh, landing gear down and confirmed in a few minutes. I want to turn around, we, we got seriously pushed around there. Okay, I can see the airport of Totagegi. It is right there. Let's try, try fixing that. Right there. Alright, landing gear going down. Normally we'd be able to check the nacelle, but it doesn't reflect, so guess the nose wheel is down. So we want to establish 150 miles per hour. This is Akamaru right here that we're about to pass directly over. And that's Totagegi right there. That is the smallest island that we're going to land on. At least by area, not by length.
Oh, that's cool. You can see through the lagoon. You can see, like, the little corals and stuff down there. See how, like, the, the water moves different from the, uh, from the area that's under it? It's pretty cool. That one there is Aukina. And at this point, landing is assured, um, so we'll establish 150, and we'll put the flaps down. a high approach. I don't think we're going to make that, so let's uh, mess around a little bit here. Uh, the length is, the runway is 6,500 feet, so we've still got plenty of, plenty of distance. Man, that's beautiful. There we go, we should be able to work with this. Uh, or not. Wow, my perception is, is really screwed up here.
So, you know, unlike the, the last one where I missed Niua by a bunch of times, this, this flight is already long enough. Maybe that's why I missed it. I think we're good now. Oh yeah, we're good. Whatever that tree is, I don't know if it's a pisca or a palm or whatever it is, it's directly in the way of the final approach path. That's probably what's screwing me up. I'm going to try this runway instead. Uh, I know my... 
I know I said the other runway, but honestly, we seem to be moving really fast. So that's making me suspicious that we may in fact be trying to land downwind. And that tree is making it really hard to get down. So we'll, we'll try we'll try this way and see if that works. Check the wheel. Yeah, that was much slower. I think I was trying to land uh, downwind, to be honest. Laps up. Fuel boost pumps off. Prop governor full forward, and let's get our touchdown time here. It's 1606. Coolant shutters full open. serious problem with the sound here. I don't know what's going on. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Oil shutters, blunt shutters, we got those all. Uh, landing lights, those are actually off, and recognition light will turn up. Alright, where's my fuel pump? It kind of looks like it's there, to be honest.
I've gotten really good at spotting those. Oh, but you know what? Uh, we we should we should stop right here. I don't think anybody's gonna land here. There's one flight a day, if I remember correctly. We want to get our um, our fuel levels now. Okay. Um. So. Oh, we gotta open up the window first. And hop out on the way. Now we can check. Okay. Um, left reserve 54, so that's six gallons out for the climb. Uh, wow, still full on the main. Right reserve, 54 gallons. Right main probably full as well. Yep, right main is full. Left drop tank is 36.6 gallons. Right drop tank. 36.6 gallons. Yeah, that's that means um, altogether 367. Uh, yeah, that, that basically means that uh, we're not going to be concerned about fuel because this thing doesn't follow the POH like it's supposed to. That's why I liked the just flight version, but unfortunately it is too buggy to fly. Three hundred and sixty seven. Okay. Everything adds up, so we'll leave that window down. We'll also roll down this other one to um keep things nice and cool here. I'd imagine I'd imagine that this far out in the Pacific it's probably pretty pleasant. Um let's see what the weather in, in Totegegi is right now. Now that I'm on the ground I can cheat. see looks like 25 degrees centigrade so that's right about room temperature and the dew point is 20 so that's that's about 60 60 some so w with with wind it would it would feel very pleasant That might be a weather station, but I don't get information about the weather here. Um, I didn't see anything behind me. Try to pull up to it and see what happens. Okay, you are not the pup. That's cool. That's the closest we've ever gotten to the jungle. 
I'm ready for this thing to end, so let's really kick it up here and get moving. So, where is it? Is it invisible? Is it just hiding for some reason? This seems to be the place where aircraft are. Okay, it's not invisible here. more parking? Mm, doesn't look like it. Alright. So then there's this weird taxi strip thing. Whoa, skidding a little bit. It's my fault being a little bit too aggressive on the controls. These controls are so horribly responsive. It's like not you're either not going at all or you're going a million. Alright, is this it? Well, this is it. So just tell me where the pump is then, shall you? Uh, we don't want people. We want, uh... Go to airport. There we go. Oh my gosh! There is no pump here. Wow. Okay, that's how far out we are in the Pacific. Okay, so what's going to have to happen now is some guys from Mangareva are going to have to come over here with a barge and a hose and fill me up with 100 low lead. Um, wow. That's crazy. That's pretty nuts. That's how far out we are. Uh oh, cumulonim or uh, cumulus congestus. That means there's a storm forming. Good thing we're on the ground. Um. Okay. Let's end this thing.
throttle 1600 RPM for the impurities to burn out. And return the throttles to 1200 RPM. Engine idle pedal. Open the throttle. Magneto's off. Let's see, cockpit heat is off. Intercooler flaps and everything else really we want to close. Good. So at this point, uh, avionics light can go off. Well, it's been off, actually. AC generator off. Generator's off. Um, to do our thing here. One off, two off. Panel light. is off and battery off. Well, first we gotta get this guy and just make sure that our lights are off. Yes, okay, now we can turn that. Why aren't the chalk showing up? Maybe it's because it doesn't think that we're on a taxiway. I'm guessing that's what it is. Well, guys, here we are in the lonely middle Pacific. Uh, we are so far out now that the islands are so small that I can see the breaking waves. We've come with to within a few yards of entering a crazy jungle. I can see water all the way around now, except just a little bit. Nice and scenic. If it were toasty and hot, you could go over there and um, relax in the uh, beach. Although I would pick this beach because this is the one that faces the lagoon. This one's probably going to have the destructive waves. Um, so it looks like we're really low too, which... Um, yeah, we're 15 feet above sea level. So, guys, this is almost as crazy as it gets. There's no, there's no fuel pump here. We're actually going to have to get, um, to get a uh, a barge from from Mangareva with with some 100 low lead in it to be able to fill up again. Um, so, yeah, things are really crazy. Other than that, my navigation went well. Um, I think that I made the right decision in deciding to come anyway, and probably would have made the right decision had I decided to abort. Uh, if this was the Easter Island leg. So that I think I will do um, if, if, if I see that there's a potential for an abort. Um, that's something that I can really look at um, uh, on the weather. I knew that the winds would be bad, but I think, I think my, my speed guess was a little bit off too, and we'll see what the actual airspeed was once I do a little bit of uh, poking around. So anyway, uh, that is it. Um, there's literally no fuel pump to look at, so I guess we're just taking a look at the beautiful scenery here. I've been Dr. Aeronautics. This has been Leg 9. Next is Leg 10, all the way to Easter Island, with the sole exception of the Pitcairn Islands being the only islands between us and it. And then things, uh, things climax from Easter Island to Robinson Crusoe. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.